Introduction The memory of humans. What a powerful piece of machinery, if it functions as it should. Sadly, it happens just too often. Well, let's just call it a few bumps along the way. So many times, I have the keys been misplaced, or went into a room to get an object only to taunt you, what did I come here for? The Internet Edition is a modern addition to the faulty short-term memory. Take your laptop or smartphone to search for something just to get distracted and forget the original reason for using your computer. Yeah, the 21st century gives you plenty of chances to demonstrate how poor your memory is. But good news is on the horizon. On as many times as possible to trick your short memory, many methods, and others are used to turbocharge your memory. Chapter 1 Brain Power and Memory Brain Power The brain is the most sophisticated entity in the world. During any time, millions of messages speed up your nervous system, helping your brain to absorb, process, and store information and give body instructions. Your body is able to do so much more than you do, taking a moment to take into account all the things that people make. Through the earliest device, such as a skyscraper, to the most recent skyscraper, and from the greatest dam to the smallest microchip, the human brain first conceived all of these things. Obviously, their brain is the most powerful resource known to man. The brain works 24 hours a day. It consumes more electricity every day than all cell phones around the world. You have billions of small brain nerve cells communicating in permutations calculated to some 1 to 800 zeros behind it. To make this somewhat comprehensible, it is determined that the number of atoms in the world, one of the smallest material stuff we can work on, with 48 zeros after it. Strengths and Weaknesses why did any of us forget? Why do some of us find it difficult to read maps? Why don't any of us have a rhythm sense? Perhaps we would not face these difficulties with all the heat operation taking place inside our heads. Think of the brain as a busy fairground with a range of rides and attractions, representing a different area of the brain and recognizing people as small nervous cells or neurons. Now, the popularity of different attractions varies from one exhibition center to another. A ride on one exhibition ground that draw more people than a ride on another. In the brain, the common riding is the part of the brain with a lot of nerve cell activity. This growth is strongly influenced by the type of education we receive as a child. One individual could be skilled in reading maps another could be more imaginative, and a third more logical. This is of course a superficial comparison as the various brain regions operate together for certain tasks and a single area dominates, but it shows how the brain varies from person to person. In short, schooling and biology are at stake. Don't be too harsh on yourself if you think you're poor in math or terrible in the languages. You are likely to succeed in another region. This does not suggest, though, that you cannot grow an intellectual capacity you believe is weaker. It's unfair to believe that just because you don't really like math or map reading, you can't aspire to change it. Your brain is similar to any muscle in your body that enhances your energy you should always aspire to develop and enhance your current mental capacity. Picture the brain. A giant rubber mushroom looks a little like a brain, with an adult brain with an average weight with around 3 pounds and 5 ounces, or 1.5 kilograms. The brain is divided into two hemispheres, the right and the left. These are connected by a central processing unit known as the corpus callosum. The back is the occipital lobe, 
which manages a lot of your visual sense. Every half is divided into four more compartments. The temporal lobes that are involved in the coordination of sound, memory, expression, and emotional responses are just behind each ear. Parietal lobe at the top of your brain manages sensations such as touch, body consciousness, pain, pressure, and body temperature. They also help you to orient your room. The front lobes behind the forehead are considered the origin of our personality. The uppermost portion of the front lobes help solve problems, trigger involuntary reactions, remember memories, assess and control impulses. It modulates our social and sexual behavior. This environment is more human than any other species. The Limbic System In each hemisphere, a set of structures lie inside the ridges and grooves forming what is called the Limbic System. This system includes the amygdala, the hypothalamus, and the thalamus. These sections activate impulses, appetites, instincts, feelings of pain and joy, and other drives important to our survival. The tonsils cause emotional reactions like anxiety or euphoria because the tonsil is the control center for brain-to-body signals, which cause blood pressure to rise when we get upset, for example. Audio and visual sensory inputs are received by the thalamus and transmitted to the outer layer of the brain, known as the cerebral cortex, where information is stored. The hippocampus is important for spatial layout learning and recall. In the very back of the brain is the brain which, along with the brain stem, is transferred and balanced, which is the first brain inherited from our primeval ancestors. This keeps us alive by controlling our unintended body processes, including respiration and digestion. What are neurons? Neurons are the cells in the nervous system which transmit electrochemical signaling information. We are the main brain and backbone elements. We are able to feel and function, respectively, through special types of neurons, namely sensory neurons and motor neurons. Both neurons respond to stimuli and transfer stimuli onto the central nervous system and then the appropriate part of the brain, where information is processed and responses are transmitted to the other parts of the body for action. Growing neuron is linked by frowned-like tendrils to about 10,000 others. The dentries are receivers, and the axons are transmitters. In addition, the neurons are not connected but are interconnected. As neurons interact, neurotransmitters, chemicals containing signals or electrostatic messages, fill the holes in the contact points. The myelin sheath serves as an insulator and enhances the pulse's speed and effect. What is intelligence? Now that we have introduced the brain, let's talk about intelligence or what makes you smart. Intelligence is a concept that is difficult to define. To different people, it can mean different things. The scientific community has been discussing its importance for a long time and its precise meaning and ways of calculating it are still controversial. The IQ test was once known to be the simplest way of assessing intelligence. However, it is now commonly recognized that it only checks different branches of the intellect. See opposite. The main thing to bear in mind is that intelligent is not just excellence or broad general knowledge in a small academic domain, or even strong spelling or mathematics. All of these things are intellectual, but they are not intelligent. Knowledge represents a broader and deeper capacity to grasp different issues in our world, to keep up, to sense issues, or to find out what to do under any given situation. It's all about being able to assess, evaluate, visualize, invent, and execute concepts effectively in concrete terms. Strands of Intelligence 
These are countless types of intelligence, such as capacity for reasoning, planning, problem solving, thinking abstractly, interpreting concepts, using words, and learning. The intellect of individuals may also be defined by their ability to adapt to a new environment, their capacity to develop stable relationships, or their capacity to generate original and innovative ideas. Moreover, more common intelligence sources could be pointed out. For example, a person who excels in a particular sport shows a high level of kinesthetic intelligence, while a person who can handle melody and rhythm has a high level of musical intelligence. In that respect, Johann Sebastian Bach and David Beckham could be seen in their respective fields as highly intelligent people. Brain Training and Intelligence According to studies by the University of Michigan, a successful brain training program, which will boost general knowledge, will strengthen the work memory and enhance the overall problem-solving skills. After measuring the mental capacity of the subjects in a wide range of cognitive tests, the investigators gave a selection of brain training exercises to the subjects. The four classes were given this mental training, which repeated the exercise for 8, 12, 17, or 19 days. After the exercise, the researchers tested the intelligence of the subjects. While the untrained group's performance improved slightly, the trained subjects showed substantial progress, which increased over time. It means that a good brain training program will improve intelligence effectively. Looking to learn. What do you know from your sense of sight? Looking to learn okay, most psychologists believe that your visual sense accounts for about 75% of your thinking. Take Sweetheart, for example. They pick up characteristics by studying the things people do in their world through their inquisitive eyes. They process and perceive facial expressions and physical movements. Babies can tell from a single glance whether their mothers are happy or upset with them. It doesn't affect anything. Imagine two men on their first date who are going out. How much attention do you pay to the conversation and how much time do you spend reading each other's language? It's not shocking that you gather a lot of information from the site as about 40% of your brain deals with the visual materials and processing. Most people know on average the names of around 10,000 artifacts that can identify them by their own types. Visual Sense your visual sense is important to interact with the world around you. Visual sense, when most children are six years of age, it is estimated that they have already learned the names of a fifth of the items that they know during their lives. Studies have shown that visual stimulation contributes most to the brain development and makes you become more complex for both young and adult. The ability to collect knowledge from more abstract visual forms such as tables, charts, webs, maps, and diagrams is peculiar to mankind. You should view information from these sources so that you can find context, reorganize, and group related items, compare, and evaluate different information. The visual sense is definitely the most powerful and commonly used in learning. Taking Instruction The great thing about the visual portion of your brain is that when you see it, you want to create a memory of it. For instance, if you want to learn a dance sequence by watching someone else perform, your brain can absorb, analyze, and then attempt to store the visual knowledge. The memory can then be used to practice and improve skills. Let your visual sense be excited to know something new. All about memory. Is our brain playing tricks? It could seem like that if we can narrate a joyful or tragic event from our childhood and yet do not remember the name of someone we met yesterday, or we can remember the whole text of an album that our favorite band records and forget something as basic as turning the screw to loosen it. How is our memory targeted? 
It is because our memory has limited capacity, and so we decide what information we should retain and what we should discard. If so, is it possible to find ways to boost our memory? Maybe we should answer these questions until we figure out what memory is. What is memory? Memory constitutes a key part of your intellect. All you know is structured and processed in one way or another. What decides whether you have a good or a poor memory is the consistency with which you access this knowledge. Researchers have been searching for the place in the brain where memories are stored to classify the hippocampus and renal cortex as possible. Contrary to what many of us may believe, however, Recent work indicates that memory cannot be traced to any particular part of the brain. In reality, it is wrong to see memory as a storage facility filled with everything you've ever learned and as an inside place to collect information. Memory is not a location. It's an operation, an experience. You really find it valuable when you recall something that is reconstructed from memories. Your memory is limited and interpretive and its functions spread throughout their brain. Two people who witness the same event will report completely differently. In short, you remember more clearly than the actual details what an event means to you. Is it possible to improve memory? Totally, totally. Memory can be trained, strengthened, and nurtured. The information stored in your mind depends on the sense that you add to it. Of example, if it is connected to a personal experience or emotion, you will remember something more likely. You will improve your memory by providing the information that you want to recall. Memory works by making something memorable, organizing and preserving the memorable piece of knowledge, Reliably remembering it at any given time. Myth about memory. The myth we hear most is that memory worsens as we get older. This is wrong. This is wrong. When the brain is constantly activated, it can improve with age. Individuals in their 1980s and 1990s may have the same power of memory as half-aged people. As we get older, Brain cells don't die off. Psychologist Tony Buzan tells us, senior moments are rather linked to absent mindset, the absent memory. The strongest forces of recollection are not usually for young people, but for those who continue to improve their cognizance throughout their lives. Older people who work creatively, learn new skills, and stay physically active will generally be stronger mentally and a younger person who doesn't do these things. Brain training provides good cognitive preparation. This is your opportunity to train your brain and increase your memory. Turn around to practice some techniques of shooting. How does memory work? Let us check out three forms of memory you have to obtain and monitor information before we introduce you to the tips. Sensory memory. You receive information from the senses, like vision and hearing, and retain it for a second or two during processing. You quickly lose what you forget and cannot be replaced as the sound dissolves. Note how sometimes you can catch an echo of an expression or a glance at somebody you know if you don't actually pay attention. But then, at a moment, it's gone. Short-term memory Data are moved to the short-term memory whenever you pay attention to something and can only save up to seven pieces of data at any time. Of example, if you can only remember the digits of an internet bank account or a PIN code for as long as you need them to be entered in using this memory, only a new piece of information is required to dislodge an old one, as short-term memory is complete, because neural processes, meanings, and associations have not been developed to enable the information to be recalled later. Some scientists claim that evolution has reduced this memory, 
Could you imagine if you can hold all the visual details in a day? What if you kept a list of every foreigner you passed by and every sign you read? Okay, the brain will finally be overwhelmed. A minimal working memory has the benefit that it allows you to focus and concentrate on the task. Long-term memory What makes long-term memory information? Any information can be committed to this memory by the rehearsal and meaningful association process. The details may be retrieved weeks, months, or even years later once processed. To make this successful, you have to make as many connections as possible to increase the number of starting points for memory recovery. When you conjugate, review, and analyze information, links are created. In particular, the connection relies on your visual memory, an efficient way to remember a list of different things. One thing we know about memory is that it is more likely to be remembered if it is linked to a personal experience or emotion. Think of a birthday if you're not convinced. What do you remember? 10th, 15th, 18th, or 21st? What do you remember? It's probably your 18th or 21st because of its significance. Natural Ways to Enhance Your Memory Everybody has moments of forgetfulness from time to time, particularly when life gets busy. While this can be a totally natural occurrence, it can be frustrating to have a bad memory. Genetics play a role in memory loss, particularly in serious neurological conditions such as Alzheimer's. Research also shows that diet and lifestyle can have a major effect on memory. There are 14 ways to improve your memory spontaneously based on evidence. Number 1. Consume less added sugar. So much added sugar has been associated with many health issues and chronic illnesses, including cognitive deterioration, consuming less added sugar. Research has demonstrated that a sugar-charged diet can lead to impaired memory and reduced brain volume especially in the short-term memory brain region. One study conducted by more than 4,000 participants, for example, has found that people with higher intakes of sugar drinks such as soda have lower overall brain volumes and worse memory than individuals with less sugar. Reducing sugar not only improves your memory, it also increases your overall well-being. Number 2. Consume Fish Oil Supplement Fish oil is rich in eicosapentaenoic acid, omega-3 fatty acids, EPA, and docosahexaenoic, DHA, omega-3 fatty acids. These fats are critical for general health and have demonstrated that they reduce the risk of heart disease, decrease inflammation, alleviate stress and anxiety, and minimize mental decline. Many studies have shown that consuming supplements of fish and fish oil can improve memory, especially in older people. One analysis of 36 elderly adults with moderate cognitive impairment showed a substantial increase in short-term and working memory following 12 months of concentrated fish oil supplements. Recent reviews of 28 studies showed how adults with moderate memory loss symptoms have enhanced episodic memory if they take supplements rich in DHA and EPA, such as fish oil. Both DHA and EPA are important for the health and functioning of the brain and also contribute to reducing inflammation of the body associated with cognitive decline. Number 3. Allow time for meditation. Meditation activities can have many positive effects on your health. This relaxes and soothes reducing tension and discomfort, lowering blood pressure and even enhancing memory. Yes, meditation has shown that gray matter rises in the brain. Gray matter comprises cell bodies of neurons. As you age, gray matter decreases impacting memory and cognitive negatively. 
Meditation and relaxation methods have been shown to enhance the memory of people of all ages, from 20 to the elderly. For example, one study found that Taiwanese college students who are active in meditation activities like focus have a much better memory of spatial work than students who are not meditating. Spatial working memory is the capacity to retain and store knowledge about things in space in your mind. Number 4. Maintain a healthy weight. Maintaining a healthy weight is important for your well-being and is one of the easiest ways to keep your body and mind in good shape. Several studies have shown that obesity is a cognitive impairment risk factor. Interestingly, obesity can actually change the brain's memory-related genes, influencing the memory. Obesity can also contribute to resistance to insulin and inflammation, which can affect the brain adversely. A study of 50 people aged 18 to 35 showed that a higher body mass index was related to significantly improved memory test results. Obesity is also associated with an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, a progressive disease that is detrimental to memory and cognitive function. Number 5. Get Enough Sleep The lack of adequate sleep has long been related to poor memory. Sleep is an essential part of memory consolidation, which strengthens and turns short-term memories into long-term memories. Evidence suggests that you could have a detrimental effect on your memory if you sleep deprived. One research, for example, investigated the impact of sleep in 40 children aged 10 to 14. One group of children was educated in memory training the night and checked after sleep the next morning. In the same day, the other group was conditioned and checked without sleep during exercise and testing. In recall tests, the group who slept during training and testing performed 20% better. Another research showed that night shift nurses made more statistical mistakes and 68% scored less in memory tests than day shift nurses. Health practitioners encourage adults to sleep between 7 and 9 hours for optimum safety every night. Summary Research consistently correlated adequate sleep with improved memory efficiency. Sleep leads to consolidating memories. You will also be better off in memory tests if you are well-rested than if you are underprivileged to sleep. Number 6. Practice Mindfulness This is a mental state in which you focus on your current situation and retain awareness of your surroundings and feelings. Through meditation, concentration is used, but the two are not one and the same. Meditation is a more organized activity whereas concentration is a mental habit they can use in any situation. Studies have shown that focus reduces stress and increases concentration and memory. A study of 293 psychology students found that those who have received an education in consciousness have strengthened their memory of awareness when remembering objects as opposed to students who have not received any training in mindfulness. Attention has also been associated with a lower risk of age-related cognitive decline and an overall improvement in psychological well-being. Incorporate consciousness methods into your daily routine. Concentrating on your breathing and softly resting your concentration as your mind moves. In summary, techniques of attention were associated with increased memory performance, Attention is also related to a reduced cognitive age. Number 7. Drink less alcohol. Too many alcohol drinks can have a negative effect on your health and your memory. Binge drinking is a drinking habit that increases blood alcohol to 0.08 grams per milliliter or higher. Research has shown that it changes the brain and contributes to memory deficits. 
A research by 155 students from the university found it difficult to instantly and postpone memory recall tests in students who drank six or more drinks in a short time, weekly or monthly, relative to students who never drank drink. The effects of alcohol on the brain are neurotoxic. Repeated binge drinking episodes that damage the hippocampus, which is an essential part of the brain's memory. While it is perfectly healthy to have a drink or two now and then, avoiding excessive alcohol consumption is a good way of protecting your brain. Summary Alcohol affects the brain's neurotoxicity, including memory loss. Occasionally, moderate drinking isn't a problem, but binge drinking can damage your hippocampus, which is a crucial memory region in your brain. Number 8. Exercise your brain. Exercise your brain by playing brain games is a convenient and effective way to increase your memory. Memory preparation is great for crosswords, word recall games, Tetris, and even mobile applications. A study of 42 adults with mild cognitive impairment showed that playing games on a brain training program for 8 hours in a 4 week time period enhanced memory test performance. Another analysis of 4,715 individuals found that their short-term memory, working memory, attention, and problem-solving improved significantly compared to a controlled group when they did at least 15 minutes of an online brain training program five days a week. In fact, brain training games have been demonstrated in order to reduce the risk of dementia in older adults. Summary. Games to help strengthen your mind and even reduce the risk of dementia will benefit you. Number 9. Reduce the consumption of refined carbs. Remember that large amounts of refined carbohydrates such as cakes, cereals, cookies, white rice, and white bread that harm your memory. Such foods have a high glycemic index, which means that the body digested such carbohydrates rapidly and induce a blood sugar spike. Studies showed that the high Western diet in refined carbohydrates is correlated with obesity, cognitive loss, and diminished cognitive function. In one study of 317 healthy children, more processed carbs such as white rice noodles, and fast foods have lowered the cognitive capacity, including weaker short-term and working memory. Another study showed that adults who consumed ready-to-eat cereal breakfast regularly had a worse cognitive function than those who ate cereal less often. Summary Refined carbohydrates, including added sugar, contribute to a blood sugar high that may damage the brain over time. Diets rich in refined carbs, depression, cognitive loss, and decreased brain functions have been linked with them. Number 10. Get your vitamin D levels known. Vitamin D is an essential nutrient that plays a number of important roles in your body. Low vitamin D levels have been linked to many health issues, including a decline in cognitive function. A research followed by 318 older adults over 5 years showed that those with vitamin D blood levels lower than 20 nanograms per milliliter lost their memory and other cognitive skills more rapidly than those with average vitamin D levels. Low vitamin D levels were also associated with a higher risk of developing dementia. Vitamin D deficiency is very common especially in colder and dark skin environments. Speak to the doctor for a blood test to see whether you need a supplement of vitamin D. Summary Deficiency in vitamin D is very common in colder climates, particularly, and was associated with age-related cognitive loss and dementia. When you think you might have low vitamin D levels, ask your health care provider for a blood test. Number 11. Exercise regularly. More exercise is critical for physical and mental health as a whole. 
Evidence has shown that it is good for the brain and can lead to better memory in all ages, from infants to older adults. For example, a study of 144 people aged between 19 and 93 found that a single 15-minute moderate practice on a stationary motorcycle resulted in better cognitive performance, including memory, across all ages. Many studies have shown that exercise can increase neuroprotective protein secretion and enhance neuronal growth and development, resulting in improved brain health. Daily exercise in the middle of life is often related to a lower risk of dementia later in life. Summary Regular exercise offers amazing benefits for your entire body, including your brain. Only mild exercises have been shown to enhance cognitive efficiency in all age levels, including memory. Number 12. Select anti-inflammatory foods. A high inflammatory diet can help boost your memory. Antioxidants reduce inflammation in the body by reducing free radicals oxidative stress. Antioxidants can be obtained in foods such as berries, vegetables, and teas. A recent study of nine studies in which over 31,000 participants consumed more fruits and vegetables showed that there were lower rates of cognitive deterioration and dementia than those who eat fewer of these healthy foods. Beer is particularly rich in antioxidants such as flavonoids and anthocyanins. This can be an effective way to avoid loss of memory. A research of more than 16,000 people reveals that those who eat the greatest amount of blueberries and strawberries have lower cognitive impairment and loss of memory than people who consume fewer berries. Summary Anti-inflammatory food, particularly berries and other highly antioxidant foods, are great for your brain. You cannot confuse the use of a variety of fruit and vegetables to include more anti-inflammatory foods in your diet. Number 13. Try curcumin. Curcumin is a compound found in turmeric root at high levels. It is one of a class of compounds known as polyphenols. It is a powerful antioxidant and has a strong anti-inflammatory effect on the body. Many animal studies have shown that curcumin decreases brain oxidative damage and inflammation and also reduces the amount of amyloid plaques. Such build up on neurons and destroy cells and tissues, resulting in memory loss. In fact, the accumulation of amyloid plaques can contribute to the progression of Alzheimer's disease. Although more human studies on the effects of curcumin on memory are needed, animal studies have indicated that it can improve memory and prevent cognitive decline. Summary This curcumin is a strong antioxidant. Animal studies have shown that inflammation and amyloid plaques in the brain are reduced. Nevertheless, further research is needed in humans. Number 14. Add cocoa to your dish. Cocoa to your diet is delicious and nutritious and provides a strong dose of antioxidants called flavonoids. Add cocoa to your diet. Research indicates that flavonoids are especially beneficial to the brain. They can help boost blood vessel development and neurons and increase blood flow in memory-involving parts of the brain. A research of 30 healthy people showed that those who eat 720 mg of cocoa flavonoids in dark chocolate have shown better memories than those who consume white chocolate without cocoa flavonoids. To make the most of chocolate, use dark chocolate containing 70% or higher cocoa content. This will help to ensure that it contains more antioxidants such as flavonoids. Chapter 2 Brain Training Basics Everybody would like to work best with their intelligence, whether you want to be strong to keep up with your kids or work. 
The exciting thing is that science now reveals what works and what does not. Training your brain must not be a case of a test and a mistake any longer. Try one thing, find out it doesn't work, and try another thing. People who use their brains more effectively tend to have better jobs, better relationships, and happier and more successful lives. And here is the exciting thing. You can change your mind and change your circumstances as a result. While you may have been told for some time that you are stuck with your brain, science has now found it is not true. The Plasticity of the Brain The wonderful ability of the brain to adapt and change over a lifetime is an exciting and growing area. And the great thing is that to have the ability to change your brain to help it work better. Brain training doesn't have to include a major life overhaul. Here are some simple tips to start. No time? Carry a few blueberries out of the way. Play a brain game while you are driving. And spend a few minutes every day. No energy? Discover the best practice to improve your brain. Your body will thank you also. Gain the benefits of green tea and learn about your brain's ability to sleep. No incentive? Not only do friendships increase inspiration, they also boost your brain power. Spend just 10 minutes socializing to enjoy the same benefits as a crossword puzzle for your brain. Knowing your brain. You have heard about the left brain and the right brain. Okay, the brain consists of the left and right hemispheres and has separate functions. Though, some people are just left-brainers and some are right-brainers. It's not necessarily true. For starters, language skills are in the left hemisphere, and this part of the brain is used by everyone. You don't have to hide behind the excuse of being a right-brainer so that you can't recall names. Through the activities in this book, you will reach the maximum amount in both halves of your brain. Key players exist in the field of brain training. Perhaps significantly, the different brain components don't function alone. They come together like a team. The rest always profits when you train one part of the brain. You can think of the brain as an orchestra or as a sports teams. The idea is the same. The rest of the team cannot be born by one star player. Both of them must work together. Short and long memory. Your brain store knowledge that you find momentarily in your short term memory. Long and short. You will transfer the information to your long term memory when you repeat the information often. Generally, you have access to it forever because it is in your long term memory. Long-term memory. This consists of many different types of memories. Autobiographical memories. For starters, childhood memories and significant events are known as autobiographical memories. Such kinds of memories are very powerful, and their loss can be a good early sign of Alzheimer's disease and dementia. You can do a lot to keep these memories fresh. Semantic Memory Your interpretation of facts and random bits of information is known as semantic memory, which is very useful to transfer new information from short-term to long-term memory. Find out the best strategies that works best. 4. Procedural Memory Procedural memory is an inherent ability you needn't even think about, like driving a car or writing your name. You will figure out how to automate new things to help the brain work more efficiently. Short-term memory. This is responsible for remembering verbal, visual, and spatial knowledge. People usually don't remember items for well in their short-term memory, even if they make a deliberate effort to transfer them to their well-term stores. There are a few opportunities to leverage your short-term memory. Verbal. Do you forget what you said in the middle of a talk? Find yourself on the top of the stairs and don't know why you climbed up. These are common symptoms and do not suggest significant memory loss. 
If you want to keep your brain in top form, however, learn how to perceive your language skills. If you want to recall or prevent a memory loss when growing old, your brain will resolve symptoms of Alzheimer's disease by keeping you busy. Visual Why do some people look so familiar, but you have trouble recalling their names? This is an example of working visual memory. Use tricks to improve the brain in recognizing faces and other visual knowledge. Spatial Do you still have trouble recalling directions? Spatial memory holds the key to finding the right place rather than the wrong area. One trick is to take a bird's eye view in a new location. Developing a healthy and sound brain Developing a balanced brain is your state of being. Are you happy? Are you happy? When are you disappointed? Are you feeling stressed? Who has you worried? Such questions are critical to decide how well the brain works. Make sure you pay attention to your mental well-being. This can make the difference between a happy and a depressed life. Don't take for granted your passions and hobbies. Figure out how this will make the brain more innovative. So a smarter brain is a more innovative brain. Whether you are a music fan or an aspiring researcher, you can choose between many activities to support your brain. You should choose to be positive about your mental health. You can honestly believe that changing situations will make your life easier and change it for you. Yet that's never the case. It's easier to get swept up in an array of items that need your attention every day. Yet, in this ever-demanding world, it is increasingly important to find time to quiet your brain and create a place to ponder. Calm time gives the brain enormous advantages. You must not be a nun or a monk and always spend hours enjoying the benefits of meditation. Scientific research has found that even 10 minutes a day have a major influence on how the brain works. One perfect way to train the brain is to keep it engaged socially, through phoning, to coffee meetings, and chatting about the new film together, the work shows the benefits of friendships for the brain. And not just face-to-face -face expressions have a positive effect. Digital friendships can also improve the capacity of your brain. Digital technology is evolving. But be mindful and not all emerging developments are good for your brain. You will only benefit from your thinking abilities if you are actively interested with modern technology. Getting Active An active lifestyle leads to a brain that is more effective, better able to respond to stress, recall details, and be more attentive. What you eat, when you exercise, how much sleep and how much caffeine you drink, all these things affect your brain. Knowing how the routine choices in these areas will make a huge difference in the way the brain functions. So find out what's actually best for your brain before you grab a bite of your sandwich and enjoy another glass of wine. Here are some tips and techniques in this book. Eat for your health. Chocolate for brain enhancement. Helping your brain with juice? Steak to assist your attention. Eating the right brain food doesn't mean you eat salad and flavorless food. On the other hand, many tasty and wonderful foods are packed with nutrients that make your brain fantastic. Get help with stimulants. Caffeine, caffeine, and narcotics are both double-edged knives. Stimulants can make the brain function better in some situations. Nonetheless, all of these opportunities come at an expense. Not all stimulants are the same, so instead of enhancing the brain, you might end up hurting. You will push it. If you think that the fitness segment would make you feel bad if you don't have a gym membership, don't worry. It won't. It won't. Alternatively, you discover how the brain also responds to physical exercise how fatigue and memory loss can be prevented, and also how the body can be healed more easily. 
Chapter 3 30 Days to a Smarter and Healthy Brain Everybody needs a better and smarter brain to process knowledge quicker and better memory. The brightest minds have less brain capacity than the average person. They use their brains more efficiently. The health of your brain is a result of your daily habits. To optimize your brain, all you have to do is change your routine slightly. 30 days gives you enough time to develop new behaviors in a particular way that will help encourage you to think better and smarter, but long enough to challenge. You should follow any of these behaviors within 30 days or less in order to enhance your brain capacity, increase your clarity of mind, and create a healthier brain. Exhaust your brain. Challenge your brain with an entirely new experience. Learn something about their brain's fatigue. Your brain needs to grow tired. Take new, cognitive stimulation something that has never happened before. Dancing, piano lessons, an alien language more likely to increase brain processing speed, reinforce synapses, and extend or build functional networks. If you learn something new and your brain feels like you want to take a break, you know that you do things that are physical in your brain and not just holding it, says Dr. Jennifer Jones, a psychologist and scientist of success. Once you know more, you build new ties and the more connections you can establish, the easier it will be in the future to retain learning knowledge. Stop feeding your comfort. Comfort offers a state of mental health to avoid feeding your comfort. If you are relaxed and well-being, your brain will release chemicals that contribute to happy feeling, like dopamine and serotonin. Yet, relaxation is bad for the brain in the long term. No dentries, links between brain neurons that keeps information going, shrinking, or disappearing. Active life increases dentry networks and also increases the brain's plasticity. No intensive apprenticeship contributes to the waste of plasticity process, Norman Deutsch said in his book, The Brain That Changes Himself. Michael Mersnick, a pioneer in plasticity science and author of Software, How Brain Plasticity, New Science Could Transform Your Life, says, It is important to brain health to go beyond the familiar. Begin Mind Mindfulness Exercises A lot of research shows that meditation raises the gray matter in your brain. Meditation may increase the thickness of regions that regulate sensory signals from outside the world and process them. Yeah, meditation, literally, makes the brain bigger. The method of silencing the mind is meditation. When the mind is still, there's a greater concentration and more inner peace. Yet focus takes a lot of time and energy. In less time than you need to have lunch, you might literally stretch your brain. Just as building muscles, you can build your brain strength and even its scale in a most healthy and natural way. Meditation has proved helpful for the brain. While meditation requires a sense of tranquility and physical relaxation, meditation has long been known to be a cognitive and psychological gain during the day, said the author of the MGH Psychiatric Neuroimaging System report, Sarah Lazar, and a Harvard Medical School instructor in psychology. The problem is beginning. It's sort of like going to the fitness center. We all know that we need to do something, but... When you decide that you try it, you can use Headspace, the app that is known to be a gym membership for your mind. Read every day. The brain needs you to read it every day. Learning improves brain communication. By reading these words, the brain decodes a variety of abstract symbols and synthesizes the results into concrete ideas. It's an incredible operation. The brain reader can be correlated with the real-time collaborative effort of a symphony orchestra. When different parts of the brain work together, 
such as pieces of instruments, to maximize our ability to decipher the written text before us. Reading rewires the brain parts. In her novel, Marianne Wolfe discusses Prost and the Squid, the reading brain story and science. Human beings invented reading only a few thousand years ago. And with this discovery, our brain structure itself has revamped, which in effect extended the ways we might think that altered our species' intellectual development. The invention of our ancestors could only be achieved by the extraordinary capacity of the human brain to establish new relations between its existing structures, a process made possible by the ability of their brain to be reshaped by experience. Reading includes many functions in the brain, including visual and auditory processes, phonemic awareness, fluence, and understanding, etc. Through reading it, the same neural regions of the brain are activated as when witnessing it, according to research carried out in the Haskins Laboratories for the Science of the Speaked Word. The brain is given more time to pause, consider, process, and visualize the message from us, unlike watching or listening to media. Reading will delay the cognitive deterioration in late life every day and keep the brains healthier. Start the habit of journaling. Having a good night of sleep, going for a run, maintaining a balanced diet, and staying with family and friends all have well-documented and important consequences for the overall cognitive function. Journaling is even more critical for your overall well-being. Journaling lets you prioritize your most critical work, articulate your thoughts, and carry out the key tasks. Several studies have shown that personal writings can help people cope with stressful events, relieve anxiety, and improve immune cell function. Writing is capable of helping the brain to take, store, maintain, and collect information, promotes attentive attention of the brain, it promotes long-term memory, illuminates trends, gives time for reflection to the brain, and is a source of mental growth and stimulation for the high level of the brain when well-directed. Love or hate it, physical exercise will greatly affect your brain and mood. Do not sit still. The brain is often referred to as like a muscle. It must be exercised to improve performance. Evidence has shown you can enhance your cognitive function by moving your body. What you do with your body impacts your mind. Find something you like. Get up and do it. And above all, make it a habit. Build and maintain a better exercise routine. According to Art Kramer of Illinois University at Urbana-Champaign, basic aerobic activities like walking 30 to 45 minutes quickly three times a semen can help avoid mental wear and tear and can boost episode memory and executive control functions by about 20%. Sleep well and uninterrupted. A good sleep decreases both physical and psychological stress. The brain conducts information reorganization during sleep. Importantly, a brief afternoon nap, known as a power nap, acts as an energy boost to the brain. For decades, Researchers have known that sleep is required by the brain to improve learning and memory. Far from being lazy, napping has been clinically proven to boost focus and maximize productivity on a brain capacity network. Napping findings indicate that it increases the reaction rate and helps to learn, given that naps do not last longer than 20 minutes. Do nothing to change. Doing nothing is ability. Do nothing. Operation can be counterproductive. We know it's difficult, but it's no good way to refocus your brain and to help you pay attention to the moment. Unplugged, isolated, and quiet time will improve your concentration, efficiency, and creativity. Learning to do nothing will also allow you at other times to regain control of your energy. One trick. Schedule do-nothing time, as you would plan tasks. 
Don't expect anyone to understand that you're not busy if you decline a social function, says Oliver Berkman. Neuroscience also shows that silence protects the brain nutritiously. Neuroscientist Marcus Rachel claims that the best thinking takes place quietly. Silence was shorthand for the reflective isolation for Rachel. During silence, the brain actively internalizes and evaluates information. A research by the regenerative biologist of Duke University, Imke Kirst, found that two hours silence daily triggered cell growth in the hippocampus, a brain region associated with memory formation involving senses. Exceptional creativity also takes place in isolation. Efficient ways to train your brain to be smarter. You go to a gym to exercise your body, run, or walk to improve your stamina. But what do you do to exercise your mind? Training your brain will not only speed up your memory, but will also help you learn more quickly. After all, there are only a few hours per day. Number 1. You are a reflection of the company you keep. All of us are the sum of five people with whom we spend the most time, at least according to the business philosopher Jim Rohn. It is no mistake that people with high rates of achievement appear to flock together. Obviously, peer groups tend to have common interests and openly and without objections discuss subjects. You indirectly grow your own by associating yourself with intelligent people. So cold, maybe you want to think about the friends with whom you spend the majority of your time. Number 2. Get adequate sleep. Any lack of rest, relaxation, and or unnecessary stress can seriously reduce the brain function performance. The human brain needs a lot of resources to function. If you're always tired, your mind can't learn and change. Some studies show that the IQ can be reduced by a lack of sleep, so make sure that you get ample shut-eye. Number 3. Read This should not be so shocking, but it should not underestimate the power of reading. Reading introduces you to new ideas and can change your thought and develop it. Reading well not only strengthens your vocabulary, but also enhances your articulation. Reading also strengthens your general knowledge, allowing you to hold informative talks. It improves your communication skills and your analytical skills. Number 4. Eat well. As they say, you are what you eat. Food is your body fuel and, above all, your brain fuel. What you do will affect the function of your brain. Nutrition-friendly foods work very well to improve your brain. For starters, walnuts are an excellent source of brain food. The fatty acids that have been shown to support neuron function are found in fish such as tuna, mackerel, and salmon. Harvard has recently carried out a major study on this exact subject. You will also ensure that omega-3 is taken daily. Number 5 Play games. One of the easiest ways to make the brain smarter. Starting from strength to strength, the brain faces endless challenges. Sometimes the brain can be lazy. When she knows that she has accomplished everything, she stops trying. The trick is to make good use of your abilities and to reach your boundaries. Brain games such as Sudoku, brain teasers, and other troublesome games help. Computer games of the right kind can even improve your IQ. Number 6. Always keep recording. If it is good enough for Einstein, Isaac Newton, or Thomas Jefferson to keep a diary, it might be a good idea for all of us to keep the diary. Getting used to making notes or writing items or thoughts continuously produces an extension of the mind. Thoughts are sometimes fickle, ethereal items, and unless they are pointed, they may be lost for good. In recording your thoughts regularly, 
you will be able to think more objectively and thoroughly. Good conduct like this will improve your ability to think clearly. Number 7. Exercise your body regularly. Practice your body and mind another obvious thing, but do not underestimate exercise strength. If you don't keep your body clean, any attempt to make to train your brain is thwarted. A small amount of physical activity will help you keep your brain in top shape, and it doesn't have to be a walk in the gym every day. A 15-minute routine instruction from 1904. Make sure you eat well, too. Number 8. Write with your hand. Modern world is a keyboard addiction. This is an easy way to place things on a page instead of your face, crayon, and paper. But here, obviously, we miss a trick. By writing longhand, you will learn a lot more quickly. Therefore, it may be a good idea to put the laptop on one of the side when it comes to training the brain. The explanation is that you are now consciously concentrating on the filtering system of your brain, the reticular activating system, or RAS. Writing activates the RAS and makes it clear to your brain that time is right. Number 9. Switch it up and continue to do so. Last on the list is random. Try to do something different every day over and over. New experiences will push the brain to create new ways to help you achieve the new mission more quickly. The best way to learn, as you say, is to do. Remember when you were a little kid. Your days have been a continuous check and error. Every practice consolidates the neural pathways and supports a process until it becomes second nature. Just as walking knowing. Chapter 4. How to Strengthen Your Concentration and Your Confidence Helpful Tips to Strengthen Your Focus Can be hard work, but it can be particularly difficult when you are constantly distracted. In the ever-linked world of today, diversions are just a click away. Even during quiet moments, Noise literally comes in as you search or try to catch this elusive Pokemon on your Twitter. It is important to concentrate on something in your environment and make a mental effort to learn new things, achieve goals, and perform well in a wide range of situations, whether you want to complete a report at work or run in a marathon. The difference between success and failure can be the capacity to concentrate. It is possible to improve your mind, but that does not necessarily mean it is fast and easy. If it was quick, then we would all have an elite athlete's razor-sharp focus. It will take some real work. You may have to make some significant adjustments to your daily routines. Here are some psychological tips and tricks that can help you achieve laser-like focus and concentration. Number 1. Begin by assessing your mental focus. Before you start working on enhancing your focus, you might want to start by assessing how deep your concentration is at the present time. Start by evaluating your focus. If you have more style in the first set of sentences, you probably already have very good focus skills, but with a little practice, you could be better. If you agree with the second set of comments, you probably have to work a little more on your mental focus. It could take some time, but it can encourage you to practice good habits and be mindful of your distractibility. Number 2. Remove Distractions Admit, you've seen this coming. While this may sound obvious, people sometimes underestimate how many obstacles keep them from focusing on the job. Such intrusions can come in the form of a radio in the background or maybe an irritating colleague who chats continuously in your cubicle. Minimizing these diversions causes sometimes sounds easier than it is. While it may be so easy as turning off the TV or radio, coping with an interrupting colleague, partner, 
child, or colleague could be much harder to you. One way to deal with this is to set a particular date, location, and request a certain amount of time to be left alone. Another solution is to find a calm place where you feel you can work untroubled. You may want to try the library, a private space in your building, or even a quiet coffee shop. A few approaches you want to try to reduce or remove these internal disturbances are to ensure that you are relaxed before the job and to use positive thinking and imagery to counter anxiety and concern. If you find your mind wandering into distracting thoughts, bring your attention back actively to the task. Number 3. Focus on one thing at a time. While multiple tasks seem like a fantastic way to achieve a lot quickly, it turns out that it's very bad for people. Juggling multiple tasks at once can reduce efficiency significantly and make it more difficult to deal with the really important details. Find your attention as a priority. If you shine the light on a certain place, you can see things very clearly. You could just take a look at the darkened outlines if you were to try to spread the same amount of light across a large dark room. Part of improving your mental focus is to make the most of your available resources. Stop multiple tasks and pay full attention to one thing at a time. Number 4. Live in the moment. It is hard to keep focused mentally when you ruminate about the past think about the future, or settle for some other excuse for the present moment. You have heard people talk about the importance about being present. Much of that is about avoiding distractions, whether physical, your cell phone, or psychological, your anxieties, and being completely involved in the present moment. The notion of being present is also important to recover your mind. Staying here and now, Hold your concentration close and your intellectual energy in information that really matters at a certain time. It might take some time, but it might take some time to learn to live in the moment. You cannot change the past or the future yet, but what you do now can help to prevent mistakes from happening and pave the way for a better future. Number 5. Carry Out Mindfulness Practice mindfulness is now, and for a good reason, a hot topic. Despite having practiced ways of meditation for thousands of years, the numerous health benefits have only only started to be recognized recently. In a report, researchers engaged personnel experts in stimulations of the kind of dynamic multitasking that they do on a daily basis. Such activities needed to be done within 20 minutes, which included responses, arranging meetings, which writing memoranda, with source of information, including telephone calls, emails, and text messages. Some of the participants were trained for eight weeks using attention therapy, and the findings show that only those who obtained this training had improved concentration and focus. Participants of the meditation group may stay longer, move between tasks more often, and perform the work more efficiently than the other participant groups. Practicing mindfulness can include learning how to meditate, but it can also be as easy as doing a deep breathing exercise quickly and easily. While this may seem like a disappointingly simple task, you will find it much harder than it seems. Fortunately, you can do this breathing exercise everywhere and anywhere. Eventually, you can find it easier to disengage from distracting thoughts and bring your mind back to where it belongs. Number 6. Endeavor to take a short break. Have you ever tried to concentrate on the same thing for a long time? After a while, your concentration will break down and your mental energy will become increasingly difficult to devote to the job. Not only that, but eventually the performance suffers. Standard theories in psychology suggest that this is attributable to the loss of attention resources, but some researchers believe 
This is more related to the propensity of brains to neglect continuing stimulus sources. The next time you work on a long-term job such as a tax preparation or tests, make sure that you have a mental break from time to time. Take care of something that isn't relevant to the mission, even for a few moments. These brief moments of rest may mean that when you really need it, you can keep your concentration focused and your utmost high. Number 7. Maintaining your practice to improve your concentration. This is not something that will happen overnight. To order to develop their communication skills, many professional athletes need a lot of time and practice. One of the first steps is to understand how distracted people affect your life. When you struggle to achieve your goals and get rid of unimportant details, it's time you put a higher value on your time. You will find, by developing your mental focus, that you can achieve more and focus on the things in your life that truly bring you happiness, pleasure, and satisfaction. Tips on Improving Your Concentration If you have ever found it difficult to perform a challenging job, prepared for an important test, or spent time on a comprehensive project, you would have liked to improve your ability to concentrate. Concentration refers to the psychological commitment on what you are actually working or studying. It is sometimes confused with the length of focus, but the length of time you can concentrate on something implies attention. Factors that influence concentration Both the duration and concentration of attention can differ for a number of reasons. Some people have to deal with problems a little harder. Sleep deficiency and age can influence concentration. Most people forget things more easily when they are aged, and reduced focus can accompany loss of memory. Concentrations can also be affected by head and brain injuries, such as concussions, as well as certain mental health conditions. When you try to concentrate, it's easy to become irritated, but can't. This can lead to tension and frustration, which helps to concentrate on what you need to do in a distant dream. If this sounds familiar, learn about research-based methods to help boost your focus. We'll also go over some factors that can affect focus and measures if you just don't seem to improve trying to increase concentration on your own. Number 1. Train Your Brain some games will help you focus better. Try Sudoku Crossword puzzles Chess Jigsaw puzzles Scrambles, word searches Memory games The findings of a 2015 research reliable source from 4,715 adults show that spending 15 minutes a day, 5 days a week, may have a significant effect on focuses on brain training activities. Brain training games will also help you to improve your work and quick memory, thinking, and problem-solving skills. Children Brain training may also function with girls. Invest in a book of puzzles, complete a puzzle, or play a memory game together. Even coloring can enhance children's or adults' concentration. Older children may prefer adult coloring books to enjoy more detailed coloring pages. Older Adults The benefits of brain training games are especially important for older adults, as memory and tension frequently decrease with age. Study from 2014, which analyzed 2,832 older adults after 10 years, followed participants. Older people who attended 10 to 14 cognitive training courses showed enhanced attention, memory, and thinking abilities. After 10 years, most study participants indicated that they could perform at least as well as possible daily activities at the start of the trial, if not better. Number 2. 
Get your game on. Make your brain game the only form of game that can lead to improving focus might not be. Recent research also indicates that playing video games can help increase focus. A study conducted in 2018 with 29 individuals found evidence that an hour of play could help improve selective visual attention, VSA. VSA refers to your ability to focus on a particular task while avoiding distractions. The scale of this analysis was small and these results are therefore not definitive. The analysis also did not determine the length of this VSA increase. Study authors suggest future research to further investigate how video games can enhance brain activity and concentration. A study in 2017 analyzed 100 studies investigating the cognitive effects of video games. The results indicate that playing video games can lead to different brain changes, including increased attention and focus. The study had several drawbacks, including the fact that research focused on wildly different topics, including addiction to video games and the potential impacts of violent video games. Studies designed specifically to investigate the advantages of video games may support these findings. Number 3. Improve Sleep Deprivation of sleep will easily impair focus without considering other cognitive functions, including memory and attention. Occasionally, lack of sleep may not cause you too many problems, yet sleeping regularly will affect your mood and performance at work. Too exhausted can also slow your thinking down and hinder your ability to drive or perform certain everyday tasks. A busy schedule, health conditions, and other factors also make sleeping enough difficult. However, it is necessary to try to get as close as possible to the prescribed amount in most nights. Many experts advise adults to sleep for between 7 and 8 hours each night. You will also benefit from enhancing your health. Switch off the TV and wipe the windows an hour before bed. Keep your space cool, but comfortable. Curl up with soft music, a warm drink, or a book before bed. Go to bed and get up every day, even weekends, at the same time. Exercise daily but consider avoiding a hard workout right before bed. Number 4. Create time for exercise Increased focus is one of the many benefits of daily exercise. All profits from exercise. A 2018 study analyzed 116 fifth graders found evidence that daily physical activity could help improve focus and attention in just four weeks. Many work into older adults indicates only a year of moderate aerobic physical activity will help with age-related atrophy of the brain to avoid or even reverse memory loss. Do what you can. While aerobics are recommended, it is better to do what you can than do nothing. You may want to exercise more or less depending on your personal health and weight goals. But sometimes, the prescribed exercise is not feasible, particularly if you are experiencing physical or mental health challenges. If you fail to make time to exercise or don't want to go to the gym, try to think of fun ways to do it all day long. You're running if you have your heart rate up. Ask yourself, Would you carry your children to school? Can you get up to fast jogging around your neighborhood 20 minutes early each morning? Can you split your weekly food ride by foot or by bike into two or three trips? Would you walk instead of driving to the coffee shop? If possible, consider exercising right before you need to really concentrate or take a mental break. Number 5. Invest time in nature. If you want to increase your focus, of course, try to get out every day, 
even for 15 to 20 minutes. You could take a short walk in a park. You can also support sitting in your garden or backyard. Every natural environment has advantages. The beneficial influence of natural ecosystems is largely confirmed by empirical evidence. Research from 2014 has shown that plants and offices were included, which led to rising focus and efficiency, employee satisfaction, and air quality. Try adding a plant or two for a variety of positive benefits to your workplace or home. Succulents make excellent options for low-care plants if you don't have a green thumb. Children Kids often benefit from natural environments. More than 1,000 children between birth and age 7 adopt work reported in 2017. The study aimed to determine how long-lived exposure to trees and greenery in the home and neighborhood could affect children's attention. The study found evidence that natural environments can support the growth of the brain and can also increase attention in children. Nature will help children with ADHD even more. A 2009 reliable source study that looked at 17 children with ADHD found that a 20-minute walk in the park could lead to better focus rather than a walk in an urban setting of the same duration. Number 6. Give meditation a shot. Provide meditation and practices of consciousness can bring various advantages. Only one of these is increased focus. An analysis of 23 studies in 2011 showed evidence that a concentration-focused training could help increase attention and focus. Attention can also improve memory and other cognitive skills. Meditation does not only mean that your eyes are closed quietly. You should meditate on yoga, deep breathing, and lots of other things. If you have tried and did not work for meditation or have never meditated before, this list will give you some ideas on how to get started. Number 7. Take a break. How can a break from work or homework increase your level? The theory may seem counterintuitive, but experts say it works really well. Consider this. You spent a few hours in the same project and you suddenly started wandering. Even if it is difficult to keep your mind on the job, you remain at your desk and push yourself to proceed. But your desire to concentrate just makes you feel stressed and anxious not to finish your work on time. You were actually there before. The next time this happens, take a short mental break when you first feel your focus slipping. Relax with a cool drink or a nutritious snack. Walk quickly or go out and have some fun. Do not be surprised if you feel more concentrated, inspired, or even creative when you go back to work. Breaks will help boost these and more functions. Number 8. Listen to music. While working or studying, music may improve focus. Also, if you don't like listening to music as you work, using nature sounds or white noise to block background noise may also help boost focus in other brain functions, according to studies. The type of music you hear will alter. Experts are generally in agreement with classical music, particularly classical Baroque and natural music are good choices to increase your attention. Consider ambient or electronic music without lyrics if you don't care for classical music. Hold your music quiet or background noise so it doesn't disturb you. It is also important to avoid the choice of music that you love or hate because you're overwhelmed by both styles. Number 9. Diversify your diet. The foods you consume can affect cognitive functions such as focus and memory. Stop fried foods, too much sugar, and very fatty or greasy foods. Seek something to consume to raise the concentration. Fatty fish. Think salmon and trout. Eggs. White and yolk both. Blueberries. Spinach. 
Hydration may also have a beneficial effect on concentration. Even mild dehydration can make it difficult to concentrate or remember details. Eating breakfast can be helpful first thing in the morning by enhancing your concentration. Aim a meal low in added sugar and high in protein and fiber. Oatmeal, plain fruit yogurt, or full grain egg toast are all healthy choices for breakfast. Number 10. Drink caffeine. Caffeine does not have to be included in your diet if you prefer to avoid it, but research suggests that caffeine will help and focus your attention. Get a cup of coffee or green tea if you notice your focus starting to drop. A part of dark chocolate, 70% or higher, may have similar benefits if you don't like coffee drinks. A research in 2017 found evidence that phytochemicals naturally found in matcha, a kind of green tea, not only enhanced the cognitive function but also led to relaxation. Matcha can therefore be a good option if coffee makes you feel jittery or on the brink. Number 11. Consider supplements. Some supplements may lead to enhanced brain concentration and function. Until you try any supplements, particularly if you have any health problems or allergies, you may want to consult with your doctor. A doctor will explore the possible benefits and dangers of supplements and can prescribe one that best suits your needs. It is also difficult to add certain foods to your diet to receive all the vitamins you need, but supplements will help you reach daily consumption targets. Folate Choline, vitamin K, flavonoids, omega-3 fatty acids, guarana seed extract. Number 12. Carry out a concentration workout. It will help improve focus and better brain health. Concentration exercises also benefit children who have difficulty focusing. This behavioral discipline requires paying complete attention to a task for a specified period of time. Consider the following. Draw or doodle 15 minutes. Spend a few minutes with another person tossing a pitch or a little pitch. Set a timer for 3 to 5 minutes. Seek as little as possible to blink. Suck on a lollipop or rough sandwich until it's gone. Fight the urge to bite. Take note of the taste, the sound of the candy on your tongue, and how long it takes to consume it entirely. During one of the events, ask your children to write a short description or to explain how they felt during the encounter. Young kids can just write words to describe their feelings. When you speak about where they lost their attention and how they managed to refocus, they will improve these abilities for their daily tasks. Concentration training will also help adults, so try it yourself. Chapter 5 Everyday Activities and Habits of People with Amazing Memory such common sense techniques will make you less often forget, while you don't have any memory genius. You probably know someone who never seems to forget something. Names, incidents, stuff that happened some years ago can be recalled in seconds. How are these men doing that? Yeah, the brain can be trained in superhuman memory. Mnemonic techniques can be helpful. But more importantly, healthy lifestyle behaviors and tactics can enhance how your memory functions. This is not only about root memorization, it is how memory flies in the brain to be used later. Not the aim is to memorize things, said Jennifer Zeitz, MS, Center of Brain Health Head of Clinical Services at Dallas University of Texas. Use what you have. Combining memories with another experience to make new ideas and choices is a better way to use your brain and will improve your life rather than worry about your capacity to remember things. Sets up daily routines. 
Do not waste resources trying to remember where you put your keys to in order to free your brain to remember new and interesting information. It is much easier to find items if you put them in the same place at all times. It can be very helpful to memory to have a routine, Zeit says. Routines allow us to achieve productivity in order for us not to use much brain power in our day's repetitive elements. Flexibility in dailies give us time and brain strength to do more important stuff in our lives. Use your sense. If you've got to put something else in an unknown location, say loudly, I'll put my sunglasses by the door on the table. Or repeat their name when you meet someone fresh. It is one of the exercises that have shown that their brain is sharp. Most of us learn more when we can use more than one sense of knowledge as it brings the knowledge into a broader context, says Zeitz. By letting your ears record data, research suggests that you are more focused on it and are more likely to recall it later. Don't multitask. It is not shocking that when your focus is split, we can't recall things. We now have access to incredible knowledge, says Sandra Bond Chapman, PhD, Center for Brain Health's founder and chief executive. It may sound counterintuitive to slow down, but research has shown that the more people consume at once, the lower their intention. By gathering fewer data, you can gain meaning, create information, and actually build brain networks. Filtering such distractions helps to improve your concentration, says Zeitz. We'll all have to first delete our cell phones and stop multitasking, she says. Meditate One way to concentrate your mind on memory enhancement is to begin meditation. Chapman suggests the first step to improve brain function is to push the brain through quiet, and research has found meditation that helps you avoid distracting, nervous, and stressful thoughts. One study showed that students who took a conscientious course and spent 10 minutes a day meditated more than students who did not. Research has also shown that meditation can actually change the structure of your brain by thickening focus areas. Organize information. Use external to organize information and free up the working memory. Set up reminders of what you need to do every day on your mobile calendar or use these 11 ways to coordinate your technology. Better still, studies have shown that the simple act of writing things down will improve your memory. So, in every room, keep posts and leave handwritten reminders and write a list before you get to the store so you don't forget something. Take these notes when you're new. Planning ahead lets you deal with current activities rather than worrying about what needs to be done later. Go out and experience nature. This simple task can increase memory by 20%, including meditation. Walking in nature will soothe distracting and nervous thoughts that confuse memory and give your brain a break from multitasking to enhance its output later on. For one test, People who traveled through nature did better memory than those who walked in an urban environment. Nature, even a brief sight of it, helps the brain relax and reset itself, says Chapman. Sleep on it. Study reveals that people who sleep for 7 hours have stronger memory than people who sleep for less than 5 hours or more. That may be the perfect amount for the brain to undergo chemical changes and incorporate new abilities or information into long-term memory. Sleep creates connections between cells and different brain regions, transferring information into brain areas that will be more efficient at storing it, says sleep expert Richard Shane, Ph.D., Sleep Easily System Maker. To dream sorts and organize knowledge, links and even resolves problems. All this reinforces memories and enhances recall. Take a nap. It is not just sleep at night that helps solidify memory. Research has shown that a brief snooze of a day can also improve memory. In one test, people had to recall pairs of unrelated words and after that, 
One group took a snack and the other watched videos, Shane says. The group that took a nap showed an associative memory, five-fold gains, and ability to recall a connection between things that are unrelated relative to a group who watched the videos. Exercise often. The mental and physical are closely linked. Movement improves circulation, blood, oxygen, and nutrients into the brain that can help ensure that it performs at its best, says the fitness and nutritionist specialist, Aaron Polinsky Wade, RD, CDE, Two Day Diabetes Diet. Studies have shown an increase in fitness, memory, and focus right after an aerobic workout, so taking little breaks during your working day can be beneficial to your body and mind. Retrace your steps. This may not be the sort of exercise that I first think about, but a recent study has shown that going backwards actually help people recall things from past times rather than going forward and sitting down. And it wasn't just the movement itself. Participants who saw objects video shift backwards or even thought that they were backwards remembered them better. The researchers called this the mnemonic time traveling effect. And although they are still not sure how it works, for the next time you try to recall anything, it could have real world applications. Eating a Mediterranean Diet Research has reported that consuming the Mediterranean root, with loads of fresh vegetables, fruit, fish, and whole grain, is correlated with improved memory, functioning, and long term. The Mediterranean diet encourages a healthy heart and strengthens the circulatory system. If there is an increased movement, oxygen and nutrients can enter the brain more quickly, which can help enhance learning and memory, says Polinsky Wade. The risk of Alzheimer's and moderate cognitive decline was decreased in this food type. You could also try the MIND diet, Mediterranean diet therapy for neurodegenerative delay, the Mediterranean diet combined with the DASH diet, dietary strategies to avoid hypertension, mind primarily focuses on items that support the well-being of the brain and memory, including green leafy vegetables, berries, and nuts, while eliminating foods with decreased cognitive capacity, such as red meat, butter, and candy. Alcohol Cutbacks Studies have shown that alcohol intake is associated with decreased memory loss. Low intake of alcohol can impact on memory at short notice, and regular and heavy drinking can have a lasting effect on the brain, as it can destroy gray matter and has a long-term effect on memory and cognitive function, states Polinsky Wade. Excessive use of alcohol, even rarely, can lead to dehydration. Since even mild dehydration can have a detrimental impact on mental health, restricting alcohol consumption may help to avoid this. Don't drink more than one glass a day for women and two glasses for men to keep your brain healthy. Drink caffeine. On the other hand, a cup of joe could reinforce your memories. Small doses of caffeine can alarm you, which can boost the memory and the attention. A study has also found that caffeine enhances the long-term memory, says Polinsky Wade. Make sure you do not drink it later in the day. However, excessive caffeine consumption may have a negative effect as it can reduce quality sleep, which can cause a memory and focus decrease over time, she said. Review Information Afterward Whenever you know something new, a perfect way to recall the knowledge is to be checked later and honed on to the important things. Summarizing stimulates the frontal networks of the brain in order to pick up various bits of information to create something new, synthesize, or aggregation, Chapman says. He says this will pump up the brain. During a test, for example, participants who played a scene after seeing a video recall it better than those who just went to a new game. You will teach new tricks to your brain. Make connections. 
You can also increase your chances of understanding as you go through the new knowledge if you identify with what you already know. For instance, if you meet someone who reminds you of a famous actor, use this to remember his name as a memory hook. Once we can add any personal importance, it also demonstrates that we are better able to recall, says Zeitz. You can also use mental images. If someone's surname, for example, is Baker, photograph them wearing a chef's hat, or Tiffany, a diamond shot. Also, sounds and smells may shape ties that reinforce memories. Sound and scent are often connected to triggering deep memories from the past, says Zeitz. Yoga for self-confidence. Any activity that directs self-awareness is a yoga practice. A bodyful yoga practice incorporates the element of deliberate self-talking and deliberate use of self-assertive language to shift your mindset, lift your mood, and eventually strengthen your sense of self. Body mindful yoga involves a variety of mental, physical, auditory, and visual activities that help you become aware of your inner dialogue and integrate body conscious language into life in order to enhance your self confidence. With time and careful practice, the children's words will become easier to find and less kind words will not become so easy to appear. To begin your journey attentively, Try this next time on your mat. Pause in a pose from time to time and observe your self-speech. Take into account how optimistic, negative, and neutral self-confidence affects your self-confidence in this specific moment. See also how you see your body. Why do you keep your face, your lips, your jaw, and your shoulders? How does your inner dialogue motivate or deactivate your physical and mental feelings? Keep a journal of your observations to increase your body's consciousness and recognize trends which unhelpfully challenge your self-confidence. This mindful yoga practice is a first step towards developing a deep understanding of how your inner language is reflected in your attitude, posture, and overall well-being. This also gives you concentrated opportunities to learn rather than judge and helps you to discover new reinforcement and vocabulary that can be used on and off the map both for yourself and with others. Chapter 6 Your Brain and Essential Diets You Should Consider Worst Foods for Your Brain your brain's seven worst foods are the most important organ in your body. This holds your heart stimulated, your lungs moving, and all processes functioning in your body. That's why it is vital to keep your brain running with a balanced diet in optimum condition. Some foods affect your brain, affect your memory and mood, and increase the risk of dementia. It is estimated that dementia will affect over 65 million people worldwide by 2030. Luckily, by eliminating any food from your diet, you can help reduce the risk of disease. Here are 7 worst foods for your brain. Number 1. Sugary Drinks Beverages like soda, sports drinks, Energy drinks and fruit juice include sugar drinks. A heavy intake of sucrose drinks not only increases your waistline and the risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease, but also adversely impacts the brain. Excessive consumption of sugar drinks raises the likelihood for type 2 diabetes and has proven that Alzheimer's disease is more likely to occur. Higher blood sugar levels can also raise the risk of dementia even in diabetes-free individuals. The key ingredient in many sucrose drinks is HFCS, which consists of 55% fructose and 45% glucose. A high fructose intake can cause obesity, high blood pressure, high blood fats, diabetes, and artery dysfunction. Such aspects of metabolic syndrome can increase the risk of dementia long-term. 
Animal studies have demonstrated that a high intake of fructose can contribute to brain insulin resistance, brain function, memory, learning, and brain neuron formation. A research in rats showed that a high sugar diet improves behavioral inflammation and memory. In addition, rats who ate an 11% HFCS diet were weaker than those whose diets contained 11% normal sugar. Another study showed that rats had increased weight, had poor blood sugar regulation, and a higher risk of metabolic disorders and memory loss in their diet with high fructose. While more human studies are needed, the findings suggest that high intakes of fructose from sugary drinks may have more negative effects on their brain over and above the effects of sugar. Alternatives to sugars are coffee, unsweetened iced tea, vegetable juice, and milk products that are unsweetened. Summary High intake of sugar beverages from A may increase the risk of dementia. High fructose corn syrup HFCS, can be especially harmful to the brain, causing inflammation and memory and learning impairments. Further human studies are required. Number 2. Refined Carbs Sugars in heavily processed grains, such as white flour, are fined in refined carbohydrates. Such carbohydrates typically have a high glycemic index, GI. This means that the body digests them quickly, triggering a blood sugar and insulin spike. In addition, these foods also have high glycemic load, GL, when consumed in greater quantities. The GL refers to how many foods, depending on the portion size, raise the blood sugar levels. High GI and high GL products have been shown to affect the activity of the brain. Research has shown that only a single meal with a high glycemic load will affect both children and adults' memory. The study conducted in Balanced University students showed that those with higher fat and refined sugar intakes were also poorer. This effect on memory can be triggered by inflammation of the hippocampus, which affects other aspects of the brain and reaction to hunger and fullness. Inflammation is considered to be a risk factor for degenerative brain disorders, including Alzheimer's and Alzheimer's disease. For instance, one study looked at older people who have used carbohydrates to eat more than 58% of their daily calories. The study found that the risk of mild mental illness and dementia was almost double. Carbohydrates may also have other brain effects. For instance, one study found that children 6 to 7 years of age who had diets high in refined carbohydrates were also less responsive. This study cannot, however, decide whether refined carbohydrates triggered these lower values or simply whether the two factors were regulated. Foods such as vegetables, bananas, legumes, and whole grains contain good, less GI carbs. This database can be used to find the GI and GL of common goods. Summary A high intake of high glycemic and glycemic load refined carbs that affect both memory and intelligence and their risk of dementia. Sugars and heavily processed grains such as white flour are included. Number 3. Foods High in Trans Fat Trans fat are a form of unsaturated fat that can damage the brain's safety. Trans fat naturally occur in animal products such as meat and milk, but these are not a major problem. Industrial manufactured trans fat are a concern, often called hydrogenated vegetable oils. These trans artificial fats can be used in shortening, margarine, frost, snack foods, baked cakes, and prepackaged cookies. Studies have shown that if people consume high amounts of trans fat, the risk of Alzheimer's disease, impaired memory, lower brain volume, and diminished cognitively tends to rise. However, some studies did not find a correlation between trans fat intake and brain health. Trans fats can be nevertheless be stopped. They have a negative impact on many other health aspects, including cardiac health and inflammation. 
there is a combination of proof of saturated fat. Three research studies found a positive correlation between the consumption of saturated fat and the risk of Alzheimer's disease, and the opposite effect was observed in a fourth study. One of the factors may be a genetic susceptibility of a subset of research populations to the disease caused by a gene called APOE4. Further work is required on this subject, however. One study of 38 women has found that memory and comprehension tests have been lower among those who eat saturated fat in comparison to unsaturated fat. The relative fat ratios in the diet can thus be a significant factor, not just the form of fat itself. In omega-3 fatty acid high diets, for example, have been found to protect against cognitive decline. Omega-3 secretion of anti-inflammatory compounds in the brain are increased and can be protective, especially in older adults. You will increase your diet's amount of omega-3 fats by eating foods such as fish, chia seeds, flax, and walnuts. Summary Trans fats may be associated with memory impairment and Alzheimer's risk, but there is conflicting evidence. Cutting out trans fats completely and that the diet's unsaturated fats can be a good strategy. Number 4. Highly Processed Foods Highly processed foods are usually high in sugar, fats, and salt. It contains items like cookies, candies, instant noodles, popcorn microwave, shopping sauces, and ready-made meals. These foods usually contain high calories and low nutrients. It's exactly the kind of foods that cause weight gain, which can affect the brain's health negatively. A research has found that elevated fat or visceral fat around the heart is associated with damage to the brain tissue. Another research in 130 people showed that even in the early stages of metabolic syndrome, the brain tissue declines. The nutrient content of processed foods in the Western diet may also have a detrimental effect on the brain and lead to degenerative diseases. A research of 52 people found that a diet high in unhealthy ingredients led to a decrease in brain metabolism and brain tissue. Such causes are known to mark Alzheimer's disease. Another study of 18,080 people found that a diet that is high in fried food and processed meats has lower learning and memory scores. Another large-scale survey of 5,038 people found similar findings, inflammation, and a rapid degeneration in thought over 10 years culminated in the diet high in red meat processed meat, baked beans, and fried food. For eight months, rats fed a high-fat, high-sugar diet in animal studies, which showed loss in learning and negative changes in brain plasticity. Another study found that the blood-brain barrier was disrupted by rats consuming a high-calorie diet. The blood-brain barrier for the rest of the body is a membrane between the brain and blood. This helps to protect the brain by avoiding the entry of certain chemicals. One way processed food can have a harmful effect on the brain is by reducing the development of a molecule called BDNF. In many parts of the brain, including the hippocampus, this enzyme is important for the long-term memory, learning, and growth of new neurons. Any decrease may therefore have a negative effect on these functions. Processed foods can be avoided by consuming primarily fruits, vegetables, nuts, grains, legumes, meat, and fish. A Mediterranean-style diet has also been demonstrated to guard against cognitive decline. Summary Processed foods lead to the organ excess fat that is associated with a decrease in brain tissue. In addition, Western-style diets can increase brain inflammation and affect memory, learning, and brain plasticity. Number 5. Aspartame This is an artificial sweetener found in a wide range of sugar-free foods. People also use it as they want to lose weight or stop sugar as they suffer from diabetes. 
It is also present in other consumer items which are not expressly for people with diabetes. Nevertheless, this common sweetener was also correlated with behavioral and cognitive problems, although the research was controversial. Aspartame consists of phenylalanine, aspartic acid, and methanol. Phenylalanine may cross the blood-brain barrier that can disrupt neurotransmitter development. Furthermore, aspartame is a chemical stressor that can render the brain more vulnerable to oxidative stress. Some scientists propose that these factors could contribute to negative effects on learning and emotions, which were observed in excess of aspartame. One study examined the effects of a high aspartame diet. For eight days, participants ate about 11 milligrams of aspartame per pound of body weight. By the end of the study, they were more irritable, depressed, and mental tests were less successful. Another research showed that individuals who used sweetened soft drinks artificially had an increased risk of stroke and dementia, although no particular sweetener form was suggested. Such results have also been backed by some laboratory work in mice and rats. A study of regular aspartame intakes in mice showed that memory was damaged and the oxidative stress in their brain increased. Another found that the long-term intake of antioxidant was imbalanced in the brain. There were no adverse effects from other animal studies, but these were mostly massive single-dose rather than long-term trials. Mice and rats are also reported to be 60 times less prone to phenylalanine than humans. Given these results, aspartame is still a healthy sweetener in general if people eat about 18 to 23 milligrams of body weight per day or less. According to these directives, a person of 150 pounds should keep their intake of aspartame to a maximum of about 34,000 milligrams a day. A sweetener packet contains approximately 35 milligrams of aspartame, and a daily 12-ounce diet of soda contains about 180 milligrams, the amounts that vary according to the brand. However, numerous studies have shown that aspartame has no negative effects. Unless you would like to stop it, however, you could easily cut back on your diet artificial sweeteners and added sugars. Summary. Aspartame is an artificial sweetener used in many non-sugar and soft drinks. This was correlated with behavioral and cognitive disorders, but it is considered a healthy drug overall. Number 6. Beer. Beer can be a good complement to a nice meal when eaten in moderation. Excessive intake can, however, have significant brain effects. Chronic use of alcohol leads to a reduction in brain volume, metabolic changes, and degradation of the brain-communicated chemicals, neurotransmitters. Alcoholics often have a vitamin B1 deficiency. This may contribute to a brain disorder called encephalopathy of Wernick, which in effect may become Korsakoff syndrome. This condition is characterized by serious brain damage, including memory loss, vision disturbances, anxiety, and insecurity. Excessive alcohol consumption may also adversely affect non-alcoholics. Heavy, one-off incidents of drinking are known as binge drinking, which can lead to the brain interpreting emotional signals differently than normal. For starters, People are less susceptible to sad faces and more susceptible to rage. These improvements in emotional perception are believed to be a cause of alcohol-related assault. Alcohol consumption can also have devastating effects on the fetus during pregnancy. While their brain continues to develop, the toxic effects of alcohol will contribute to developmental disorders such as fetal alcohol syndrome. The effect of alcohol abuse in young people can also be particularly harmful because the brain continues to develop. Teenagers who drink alcohol have brain, structure, and behavioral disorders relative to those who do not. Alcoholic drinks combined with energy drinks are of particular concern. 
They lead to higher drinking rates, impaired driving, risky behaviors, and increasing risk of alcohol dependency. Another effect of alcohol is sleep cycle disturbance. Before bed, alcohol consumption is associated with poor sleep quality, which can cause chronic sleep deprivation. Nonetheless, moderate alcohol consumption, including better heart health and lower risk of diabetes, may have beneficial effects. These beneficial effects are particularly evident in a modest one glass daily consumption of wine. Ultimately, you should avoid overconsumption of alcohol, particularly if you're a young adult or a teenager, and completely avoiding binge drinking. It's best to avoid drinking alcohol when you are pregnant. Summary While moderate intake of alcohol can have a good health, excessive intake can lead to memory loss behavioral changes, and sleep disorders. Teenagers, young adults, and pregnant women are particularly high-risk groups. Number 7. Fish High in Mercury This is a heavy metal contaminant and neurological toxin that can be kept in animal tissues for a long time. Long-lasting, predatory fish are particularly susceptible to mercury accumulation and may bear more than 1 million times the surrounding water concentration. For this reason, seafood, particularly wild varieties, is the main food source of mercury in humans. After a person has ingested mercury, it spreads throughout the body and concentrates into the brain, liver, and kidneys. It also concentrates in the placenta and fetus in pregnant women. The consequences of mercury toxicity include destruction of the central nervous system and neurotransmitters and neurotoxin stimulation that contribute to brain damage. Mercury can interrupt brain growth and cause a degradation of cell components for the growth of fetuses and small children. This can lead to cerebral paralysis and other delays and deficits in development. Some fish, however, are not an important source of mercury. Fish are actually high-quality protein and contain many important nutrients, for example, omega-3s, vitamin B12, zinc, iron, and magnesium. Fish should also be used in a balanced diet. It is usually best for adults to eat between 2 and 3 portions of fish a week. However, only consume one serving if you eat shark or swordfish and no other fish that week. Women and children pregnant, including shark, swordfish, tuna, orange roughy, king mackerel, and tilefish should avoid and limit high mercury fish. However, two to three servings of other low mercury fish a week are still free. The recommendations that vary from country to country depending on fish species, so it is always best to test the recommendations that are right for you with your local food safety agency. It is also a good idea to test the local authorities the levels of mercury in the water you fish from if you are catching your own fish. Summary Mercury is a neurotoxic element that may particularly damage fetuses and young children's growth. The key component of the diet is massive marine fish, including shark and swordfish. It is best to reduce the consumption of mercury-high fish. Bottom Line Definitely, the bottom line of your diet has a big effect on your health. High in sugar, refined oil, unhealthy fats, and processed foods can lead to memory and learning impairments, as well as increased risk of diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. Several other food compounds are also harmful to your brain. When ingested in large amounts, alcohol can cause significant brain damage, and mercury contained in seafood can be neurotoxic and irreversible damage to the brain's forming. This does not mean, however, that all such foods must be avoided. Some foods, such as alcohol and seafood, have health benefits as well. A diet rich in balance, fresh whole foods is one of the best things you can do for your brain. Best Foods to Enhance Your Memory and Brain Your brain is a huge deal. As your body control hub, it controls your heart and lug respiration and lets you move, smell, and think. 
This is why having the brain in full working condition is a smart idea. The foods you consume play a role in maintaining a healthy brain and can enhance certain mental functions, including memory and attention. This book lists 11 foodstuffs that enhance your brain. Number 1. Fatty Fish When people speak of brain food, fatty fish is always at the top of the list. Fatty fish, this type of fish includes salmon, trout, and sardines, all of which are rich omega-3 fatty acid sources. About 60% of your brain is fat, and half of the fat is omega-3. The brain constructs brain and nerve cells with omega-3s, and these fats are important to the learning and memory. Omega-3s even help your brain a few times. For one thing, mental deterioration linked to age can delay and help Alzheimer's disease. On the other hand, not having enough omega-3s is correlated with cognitive impairments and depression. In general, eating fish tends to be beneficial to health. One research showed that people who eat baked or grilled fish have more gray matter in their brains daily. Matter of gray contains most nerve cells which control decision-making, memory, and emotion. In general, fatty fish are a perfect alternative for the well-being of the brain. Summary Fatty fish, an essential building block in the brain, is a rich source of omega-3s. Omega-3s help sharpen your memory and boost your mood and defend your brain against decay. Number 2. Coffee If your morning's highlight is coffee, you are happy to know it's nice for you. The brain can be strengthened by two key components of coffee, caffeine and antioxidants. Coffee has a variety of positive effects on the mind, including Increased alertness Caffeine keeps the brain alert by blocking adenosine. Increased mood. Caffeine may also improve some of your feel-good neurotransmitters, like serotonin. Sharpened focus. One study shows that when participants drank one big cup in the morning, or smaller amounts during the day, the work-required focus was more efficient. Long-term drinking coffee is often associated with a decreased risk of neurological disorders. For example, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. At least part of this may be attributed to the high concentration of antioxidants in coffee. Summary Coffee will improve consciousness and mood. Thanks to its caffeine and antioxidants, it can also provide some defense against Alzheimer's. Number 3. Blueberries Blueberries provide various health benefits, some of which are unique to your brain. Blueberries and other highly colored baits contain anti-inflammatory and antioxidant anthocyanins, a group of plant compounds. Antioxidants function against oxidative and inflammatory stress, factors that may lead to the deterioration of the brain and neurodegenerative diseases. Some blueberry antioxidants have been found to build up in the brain and help enhance brain cell communication. Animal studies have shown that blueberries improve memory and can even prevent memory loss for a short time. Try to sprinkle them with your cereal breakfast or add them to the smoothie. Summary Blueberries contain antioxidants which can slow brain aging and improve memory. Number 4 Turmeric Turmeric has recently created a lot of buzz. This yellow spice is a main ingredient in curry powder and has many advantages for the brain. It has been shown that curcumin, the active input in turmeric, crosses the blood-brain barrier and thus can reach the brain directly and help the cells. Can support memory Curcumin may help enhance memories in people suffering from Alzheimer's. It is a potent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory agent connected to the brain's following benefits. The amyloid plaques that are characteristic of the disorder may also be visible. Facilitate depression. Increases both serotonin and dopamine, both boosting mood. 
One research showed that curcumin reduced the symptoms of depression over six weeks, as with an antidepressant. Support for the development of new brain cells. Curcumin improves the neurotrophic factor derived from the liver, a growth hormone type that allows brain cells to develop. It can help to postpone mental deterioration associated with age, but further work is required. Try cooking with currant powder, adding turmeric in potato dishes to make gold or turmeric tea to reap the benefits of curcumin. Summary Turmeric and its active ingredient curcumin have strong anti-inflammatory and antioxidant advantage that support the brain. Throughout studies, signs of depression and Alzheimer's disease have been developing. Number 5. Broccoli This is filled with strong plant compounds, including antioxidants. It is also very rich in vitamin K, providing a serving of one cup with over 100% of recommended daily intake. This fat-soluble vitamin is important for sphingolipid formation, a type of fat tightly packed in the cells of the brain. Several studies in older adults have associated a greater intake of vitamin K with a better memory. Beyond vitamin K, broccoli contains a number of compounds that can protect the brain against damage, giving it anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Summary Broccoli contains a variety of high antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds, including vitamin K. Number 6. Pumpkin Seeds Pumpkin seeds contain strong antioxidants that resist free radical damage to the body and mind. They are also a strong magnesium, iron, zinc, and copper source. That of the following nutrients is vital for the health of the brain. Zinc. Zinc is necessary for signaling the nerves. Zinc deficiency has been linked with many neurological disorders, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and depression. Magnesium. For learning and memory, magnesium is important. Many neurologic disorders, including migraines, depression, and epilepsy, are associated with low magnesium levels. Copper. The brain uses copper for nerve signal power. If copper is out of the blue, neurodegenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's are more likely to occur. Iron. Iron deficiency is often characterized by brain fog and brain damage. The research mainly focuses on these micronutrients rather than on pumpkin seeds. But, since pumpkin seeds contain large quantities of these micronutrients, you will possibly benefit from adding pumpkin seeds to your diet. Summary Pumpkin seeds are rich with many micronutrients, including copper, iron, magnesium, and zinc, that are important for brain function. Number 7. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, cocoa, and other substances such as flavonoids, caffeine, and antioxidants include a few brain enhancing substances. Flavonoids are a category of plant antioxidants. Chocolate flavonoids are found in the brain areas that deal with thinking and memory. Researchers suggest that these compounds can enhance memory and also slow down mental development. In addition, several studies have confirmed this. In a study of over 900 participants who consumed chocolate performed better in a series of mental activities, like memories, than in others who ate chocolate seldom. According to study, chocolate is also a legitimate mood booster. One study showed that people who ate chocolate had more positive feelings than those who ate crackers. This is not clear, however whether this is due to chocolate additives or simply that the yummy taste makes people happy. Summary Chocolate flavonoids can help protect the brain. Research has shown that eating chocolate can improve both memory and mood. Number 8. Nuts Research has shown that eating nuts can improve cardiac health and having a healthy heart is correlated with a healthy brain. 
A study in 2014 found that nuts can enhance memory and even prevent neurodegenerative diseases. Another major study has also shown that people who have been consuming nuts consistently over several years have a better memory than women who haven't eaten nuts. Some foods, such as healthy fats, antioxidants, and vitamin E, may explain its benefits to the brain. Vitamin E prevents free radical damage to cell membranes, which helps slow mental decline. Walnuts may have an extra edge while all nuts are good for your brain since they also contain omega-3 fatty acids. Summary Nuts have a variety of brain-enhancing nutrients, including vitamin E, healthy fats, and herbal compounds. Number 9. Oranges You should eat one medium in one day to get all the vitamin C you need. Regarding brain health, this is critical since vitamin C is a key factor to avoid mental decline. According to a 2014 review article, eating sufficient amounts of vitamin C-rich foods will protect against age-related mental decline and Alzheimer's disease. Vitamin C is an effective antioxidant to fight free radicals which can damage brain cells. Therefore, vitamin C improves mental development as you get older. Vitamin C can also be derived from bell peppers, guava, kiwi, tomatoes, and strawberries. Summary Oranges and other high in vitamin C foods can help protect your brain from free radicals. Number 10. Eggs Eggs are a good source of multiple brain health nutrients, including B6 and B12 vitamins, folate, and choline. Choline is an essential micronutrient that your body uses to develop acetylcholine which helps to control mood and memory. Two studies have shown that higher choline intakes are correlated with improved memory and mental function, so many people in their diet don't get enough choline. Eating eggs is simple since egg yolks are one of the most concentrated sources of choline. Choline consumption is 425 mg daily for the majority of women and 550 mg daily for men. Only one egg yolk is 112 mg yolk. Vitamin B12 also play many roles in the protection of the brain. Firstly, the progression of mental deterioration in elderly people may be delayed. Deficiency was also related to depression in two forms of B vitamins, folate and B12. Folate deficiency is common in elderly persons with dementia, and studies show that folic acid supplementation can reduce mental deterioration due to age. B12 is also involved in brain chemicals synthesization and brain sugar regulation. It should be noted that very little work is carried out on the relation between eggs and brain health. However, the brain-enhancing effects of the nutrients present in eggs are recognized. Summary Eggs are a rich source of various B vitamins and choline that are essential for the proper function and development of the brain and the mood. Number 11. Green Tea As with coffee, green tea caffeine improves the activity of the brain. In reality, alertness, efficiency, memory, and concentration have been improved. However, Green tea also has other components which make it a safe brain drink. L-theanine is an amino acid that crosses the blood-brain barrier and enhances neurotransmitter GABA activity which helps to reduce anxiety and relaxation. L-theanine also raises the frequency of alpha waves in the brain, allowing you to relax without feeling tired. An analysis found that L-theanine can help you relax by counteracting the calming effects of caffeine in green tea. It is also rich in polyphenols and antioxidants that can protect the brain against mental illness and reduce the risk of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Furthermore, green tea has enhanced memory. Summary Green tea is a perfect drink for your brain. Its content of caffeine increases alertness, while its antioxidants protect the brain and L-theanine help you relax. Bottom Line 
Many foods will help keep your brain balanced. Some of the foods on this list, such as the fruits and vegetables and tea and coffee, have antioxidants that help protect your brain against harm. Some, including nuts and eggs, provide memory and brain growth nutrients. You will improve your brain health and increase your alertness, memory, and mood by using these foods strategically in your diet. How Omega-3 Fish Oil Influences Your Brain and Mental Health Fish is a common supplement from fatty fish such as sardines, anchovies, cabbage, and salmon. Fish oil contains primarily two forms of omega-3 fatty acids, eicosampentheonic acid, EPA, and DHA, renowned for their heart health and skin value. The effect of fish oil on the brain, particularly when it comes to mild memory loss and depression, is also amazing. The book explores the studies into impact of omega-3 fatty acids in fish oil on your brain and mental health. Which are omega-3 fish oils? Omega-3 fatty acids are polyunsaturated fats that affect most brain and mental health benefits of fish oil. Fatty acids fish oil comprises two primary forms of fatty acid omega-3, EPA and DHA. These two fatty acids form a cell membrane portion that have strong anti-inflammatory functions in the body. They are also well known for their important positions in heart and human development. EPA and DHA are present almost exclusively in fatty fish and fish oil in the human diet. Since most people do not eat the required quantities of fish, many people possibly do not receive enough EPA and DHA in their diets. Another omega-3 called alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, can render EPA and DHA in the body. The food sources of ALA are walnuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, canola oil, soybeans, and soya oil. But humans cannot very effectively convert ALA to EPA and DHA, with estimates suggesting that less than 10% of your ALA consumption is converted to EPA or DHA. Taking fish oil, therefore, can be a good option especially for those who don't eat much fish, but still seek to get some of the health benefits of omega-3 fatty acids. Summary The two main omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oil are EPA and DHA. Since people frequently fall short of their recommended intake of fish, additional fish oil supplements can provide you with the health benefits of omega-3s. How are omega-3s impacting the brain? The EPA and DHA omega-3 fatty acids are essential for normal brain function and growth of all life stages. EPA and DHA tend to have important roles in the brain of the infant. Some studies have in fact associated the consumption and use of fish oil by pregnant women with better scores for their children on intelligence tests and early childhood brain development. These fatty acids are also important over the entire lifespan for preserving normal brain function. They are abundant in the brain cell membranes to protect the integrity of the cell membrane and facilitate communication between brain cells. When animals are fed omega-3 fatty acid diets, the amount of DHA in their brains reduces and they appear to have learning and memory deficits. Lower levels of DHA have been associated with reduced brain size in older adults, which is an indication of accelerated brain aging. It is obviously important to ensure that you get adequate omega-3 fatty acids to prevent certain of those adverse effects on brain function and development. Summary For normal brain function and growth, omega-3s are essential. Low omega-3s can accelerate brain aging and lead to brain function deficits. Fish oil may benefit mild memory loss. The omega-3 fatty acids found in fish oil are essential to the function and growth of the brain. Fish oil is also believed to enhance the brain function of people with memory disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease or other cognitive impairments. In millions of older people, Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia and affects brain function and quality of life. 
Finding a supplement that can boost the brain function of this population is a major discovery that changes life. Sadly, a study of the literature found no convincing evidence that omega-3 supplements such as fish oil enhance brain function in Alzheimer's patients. In comparison, several studies indicated that in people with milder forms such as mild cognitive impairment, MCI, or age-related cognitive decline, taking supplements of fish oils can improve brain function. These disorders are not as extreme as Alzheimer's but can lead to memory loss and even other kinds of diminished brain function. One study recorded a daily 900 mg DHA or placebo in 485 older adults with age-related cognitive decline. DHA users performed better on memory and learning tests after 24 weeks. Likewise, another study studied the effects of consuming 1.8 grams of omega-3s daily for 24 weeks from fish oil supplements. Studies also reported changes in brain function in MCI patients, but no benefits for Alzheimer's patients. Based on this study, it seems that supplements of fish oils may be most efficient if people begin to take them early in the decreased brain function. If you wait too long, the brain may not benefit from fish oil. Summary Studies have shown that in people with Alzheimer's disease, fish oil does not enhance brain function. Evidence suggests, however, that people with MCI or mild brain declines can get the most from taking fish oils. Fish oil may improve depression. The goal of non-medicinal therapies to relieve symptoms is to find solutions for depression and other mental health conditions. Fish oil may relieve depression. People believed for a long time that fish oil was associated with changes in mental health. But does research actually support this claim? Recent analysis of clinical trials have found that the use of fish oil supplements strengthen depressive symptoms with results comparable to antidepressant drugs in people with depression. Nevertheless, in individuals who already took antidepressants, the greatest increase in depressive symptoms tended to occur. Moreover, when the fish oil supplement produced higher EPA levels, people appear to see more effects. Why EPA and omega-3s boost depressive symptoms is still uncertain. Researchers propose that its effects on serotonin and serotonin receptors in the brain could be related. Others indicated that fish oil omega-3s can improve depressive symptoms by means of anti-inflammatory effects. Further evidence indicates that fish oil can improve other conditions of mental health such as borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder. Nonetheless, further work is required before the scientific community can make concrete recommendations. Summary Additional fish oils, especially those with higher EPA levels, can improve depression in people with depression. We seem to have the greatest impact among those who take antidepressant drugs already. Fish oil does not enhance brain capability in healthy people. This article will address the impact of fish oil on Alzheimer's disease and mild changes in brain function, but many questioned about its effects in people with normal brain activity. Fish oil does not improve brain function in healthy people. Observation studies indicate a strong link between eating more omega-3 fatty acids from fish and enhancing brain function. Similar research, however, evaluated the use of fish rather than fish oil supplements. In addition, correlation studies such as these cannot show cause and effect. Most of the superior regulated studies conclude that omega-3s in fish oil supplementation do not tend to improve the brain function of healthy people who have no memory disorders. Taking supplements with 1 gram of fish oil a day did not boost brain function in a study of 159 young adults compared to a placebo. Similarly, Several studies in older adults have shown that taking fish oil supplements will not boost brain function tests even those with no memory issues. Summary Clinical research showed that after consuming supplements of fish oil, healthy people with normal brain functions did not see changes in brain function. Can you take fish oil for your brain? 
You will want to consider taking fish oil based on the best available evidence if you have undergone a mild decrease in brain function or have been diagnosed with depression. There may be other health benefits for taking fish oil supplements, but both types of people would possibly have the biggest advantages in terms of brain and mental health. There are no official guidelines as to how many omega-3s you need to take from fish oil in order to reap the benefits for brain development and mental health. Test amounts range from study to study. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has set a maximum upper limit of 3,000 mg a day for omega-3 fatty acid supplements. The European Food Safety Authority has laid down its advice to no more than 5,000 mg a day. The daily intake of 1,000 to 2,000 mg omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil can be a healthy starting point, albeit below the recommended upper limit. Depressed people should choose fish oil supplements with higher EPA levels. When testing fish oil supplements, it is very important to read labels carefully. A 1,000 mg fish oil capsule may contain less than 500 mg of actual omega-3 fatty acid but this could differ from brand to brand. Fish oil supplements are usually considered safe as dosages below those listed above. Nonetheless, as always, before beginning fish oil supplements, you should tell your doctor. Due to its possible blood clotting effects, this is especially relevant if you are currently taking or are having an upcoming operation. Summary People with depression or a mild brain loss should continue to take 1,000 to 2,000 mg omega-3 of fish oil daily. Since supplements of fish oil can affect blood clotting, talk with your doctor before you begin to take them. The EPA and DHA bottom lines are omega-3 fatty acids and fish oil essential for normal brain function and growth. Those with depression or a slight drop in brain activity can take omega-3s from fish oil as their symptoms and brain function can improve. Regrettably, work has shown that fish oil does not have any effect in people with normal brain or Alzheimer's disease. The daily intake of 1,000 to 2,000 mg of omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil can be a healthy starting point. Your average dose will not be greater than 3,000 mg. While fish oil is generally celebrated for its cardiac health benefits, it also has amazing effects that are worthy of attention in terms of brain and mental health. Why Low-Carbon and Ketogenic Diets Improve Brain Health Low-carbon health and ketogenic diets have many benefits for health. It is acknowledged, for instance, that they can induce weight loss and help fight diabetes. These are also useful for some brain conditions, however. The book discusses the impact of low-carbon and ketogenic diets on the brain. What are keto diets and low-carb? Although the low-carbon and ketogenic diets are similar, there are also a number of important variations. Keto diet Carbs are limited to 50 grams or less per day. Protein is often reduced. The main objective is to increase blood levels of ketones, molecules that can substitute glucose as an energy supply for the brain. Low-carb diet Carbs can vary between 25 and 150 grams a day. Protein is not usually reduced. Ketones may or may not increase to high blood levels. The brain is primarily fueled by ketones in a ketogenic diet. These are made in the liver when the intake of carbon is very small. The brain also relies heavily on glucose with a standard low-carb diet, although it can consume more ketones compared to a regular diet. Bottom line, low-carbon and ketogenic diets are in many respects identical. A ketogenic diet, however, includes even less carbohydrates and results in significant increases in ketone blood levels. The low-carb myth You might have learned that your brain needs 130 grams of carb every day to work properly. The 130 grams of carbs misconception, this is one of the most popular low-carb diet myths. 
Indeed, in a report from the U.S. Food and Nutrition Institute, the lower limit of life dietary carbohydrates appears to be zero as long as adequate amounts of protein and fat are eaten. Although a zero is not recommended because many healthy foods are eliminated, a good broad diet is certainly available and you can eat much less than 130 grams per day. Bottom line, to provide nutrition to the brain, it is a common misconception that you need to eat 130 grams of carbs a day. How low carbon and keto diets provide energy for the brain. Low carb diets have a fascinating way to provide energy for your brain through ketogenesis and gluconeogenesis processes. Ketogenesis Glucose, the blood sugar, is normally the primary fuel for the brain. Unlike muscle, fat cannot be used by the brain as a source of power. The brain will use ketones, however. Your liver develops fatty acid ketones when the amount of glucose and insulin is small. Ketones are created in small quantities when you go without food, for instance, after a full night's sleep, for many hours. However, during the fasting or when the carb intake drops below 50 grams a day, liver increases its output of ketones further. Ketones can supply up to 70% of the brain's energy needs when carbs are removed or reduced. Gluconeogenesis Although most of the brain can use ketones, parts involve the action of glucose. Some of this glucose can be provided by the limited amount of carbs eaten in a very low-carb diet. The rest is a process called gluconeogenesis in your body that means making new glucose. This is how the liver produces glucose for the use of the brain. It uses amino acids, the building blocks of protein, to generate glucose. Glycerol can also contain glucose in the liver. It is the backbone that links fatty acids and triglycerides, the source of fat in the body. Thanks to gluconeogenesis, even when your carb intake is very small, the parts of your brain that need glucose obtain constant supply. Bottom line? Up to 70% of the brain can be powered by ketones with a very low-carb diet. The remainder can be supplied with glucose from the liver. Ketogenic Diets, Low Carb, and Epilepsy Epilepsy is a condition of seizures associated with overexertion in the cells of the brain. This can lead to spontaneous movement and loss of consciousness, which most commonly happens in infants. The diagnosis of epilepsy can be very complicated. Seizures of different kinds occur and several children experience multiple episodes per day. While several effective anti-seizure medications exist, these medications in at least 30% of patients cannot stop seizures. A form of epilepsy is referred to as refractory or non-responsive. Dr. Russell Wilder developed a ketogenic diet in 1921 for the treatment of drug-resistant epilepsy in children. His diet contained nearly 90% of calories from fat and has shown that the positive effects of hunger on seizures are imitated. The precise mechanisms behind the anti-seizure benefits of ketogenic diet remains unclear. Ketogenic and low-carb diet food choices for treating epilepsy In epilepsy, four kinds of carbohydrates are used. Number 1. Classic Ketogenic Diet, KD 2 to 4% of calories from carbohydrates, 6 to 10% from protein, and 85 to 90% from fat. Number 2. Atkins Diet Modified, MAD. 4 to 6% of carbohydrate calories with no protein limits in most situations. The diet begins with allowing children 10 grams of carbs a day and adults 15 grams, with a likely small increase if tolerated. Number 3. Medium Chain Triglyceride Ketogenic Diet First 20% carbohydrates, 10% protein, 15% medium gourd triglycerides, and 20% other fats. Number 4. Low Glycemic Index Treatment, LGIT Restricts the option of carb for glycemic indexes below 50. 
roughly 20 to 30% of protein calories, 10 to 20% of carbs, and the rest from fat. Epilepsy, classic ketogenic diet, CKD. This diet has been used in many centers of epilepsy, and several trials have shown an increase in around half of patients. In fact, 90% of more of children who respond to the diet have decreased seizures. In one study, children treated for three months with a ketogenic diet had an overall 75% reduction in baseline seizures. Although the classic ketogenic diet can be very productive against seizures, a neurologist and dietitian must supervise it closely. Food options are often very limited and diet, especially for older children and adults, can be difficult to follow. Epilepsy, Modified Atkins Diet, MAD In many cases, the Modified Atkins Diet has proved to be as effective or almost as successful in treating childhood seizures as the conventional ketogenic diet with fewer side effects. A randomized study of 102 children reported a 90% or greater reduction in seizures for 30% of those who followed the adjusted Atkins diet. Although most trials in children were completed, some adults with epilepsy also showed good results with this diet. Across 10 trials, the additional ketogenic diet was contrasted with the modified Atkins diet. It was much more likely that people adhere to Atkins modified diet. Epilepsy, the medium chain triglyceride ketogenic diet. This diet has been in use since the 1970s in epilepsy, the MCT diet. Saturated fats present in cocoa and palm oil are MCTs. In comparison to long-chain fats, they can be used for fast energy production or liver ketone production. The ability of MCT oil to lift ketone levels with less carb intake restrictions has made the MCT diet popular with others. A review of children showed that the MCT diet in the prevention of seizures was similar to the traditional ketogenic diet. Epilepsy the Low Glycemic Index Treatment, LGIT. Another dietary strategy that can manage epilepsy despite its very modest effect on ketone levels is the Low Glycemic Index Treatment. In a study conducted, 8 of 11 patients who treated LGIT had a seizure reduction of more than 50% and half of those patients had no seizure. Bottom Line Various types of low-carbon and ketogenic diets reduce convulsions in medication-resistant epilepsy patients. Ketogenic diets, low-carb, and Alzheimer's disease. While few systematic studies have been carried out, it appears that low-carbon and ketogenic diets may support people with Alzheimer's disease. The most common type of dementia is Alzheimer's disease. This is a chronic disorder in which the brain produces memory loss plaques and pliers. Many researchers agree that type 3 diabetes should be considered, as the brain cells are insulin resistant and cannot properly use glucose that causes inflammation. Metabolism, a step towards type 2 diabetes, also raises the risk of Alzheimer's disease developing. Experts say that Alzheimer's disease shares similar similarities with epilepsy including exhaustibility of the brain contributing to convulsions. One analysis of 152 people with Alzheimer's disease showed significant higher levels of ketone and a marked increase in brain function than the control group in those who received an MCT supplement for 90 days. Animal studies also indicate that a ketogenic diet can help fuel an Alzheimer's brain. Like epilepsy, Scientists are not aware of the exact mechanism behind these potential advantages against Alzheimer's disease. One hypothesis is that ketones protect brain cells by reducing reactive oxygen species that are metabolism byproducts that can cause inflammation. Another hypothesis is that a fat-inclusive diet can reduce harmful proteins in the brains of people living with Alzheimer's, including saturated fat. Bottom line. 
Ketogenic diets and MCT additives can improve memory and brain function in Alzheimer's patients, even if research is still in its early stages. Other Benefits While not tested as well, low-carb and ketogenic diets may have even other benefits for the brain. Memory Elderly people at risk of Alzheimer's disease have shown a memory improvement after six weeks on a very low-carb diet. Brain health. Feeding older and obese rats to a ketogenic diet can enhance the health of the brain. Congenital hyperinsulism. The disease causes hypoglycemia and is likely to affect the brain. Congenital hyperinsulism has been treated with ketogenic diet successfully. Headache migraines. Researchers claim that a low-carb or ketogenic diets can benefit migraine patients. Parkinson's disease. Five in seven Parkinson's disease individuals who had their four-week ketogenic diet in a limited, unregulated sample observed a 43% increase in self-reported symptoms. Traumatic brain injury. Patients with serious head injury, given a carb-free diet, could get food while preventing high blood sugar, which could hinder recovery a traumatic brain injury. Bottom line? Low-carbon and ketogenic diets are also good for the health of the brain. In older adults, they can boost their memory, help to reduce migraines, and, to name a few, minimize Parkinson's disease symptoms. Potential Issues with Low-Carb and Ketogenic Diets Some conditions are not recommended for a low-carbon or ketogenic diet. You may want to speak to your doctor before you start a ketogenic diet if you have some sort of medical condition. The Side Effects of Low-Carbon or Ketogenic Diets People respond in many different ways to low-carbon and ketogenic diets. Elevated Cholesterol Adults may have elevated levels of cholesterol and children may have rises in cholesterol and triglyceride levels. It may be temporary, however and does not appear to affect cardiac health. Kidney stones. Rare, but in some children, ketogenic dietary treatment for epilepsy has occurred. Potassium citrate is commonly used to treat the kidney stones. Clogging. This is very common in ketogenic diets. One treatment center reported a constipation of 65% of children. It is also easy to treat with softening stool or nutritional changes. Eventually, children with epilepsy avoid the ketogenic diet as soon as seizures have healed. Most of them have no long-term adverse consequences. Bottom line? For most people, but not all, a very low-carb ketogenic diet is healthy. Many people can experience temporary side effects. Tips for Diet Adaptation As you turn to a low-carbon or ketogenic diet, certain adverse effects can be observed. You may feel tired or tired for a couple of days. The following are tips for the adaptation period. Make sure to get ample fluid. Drink at least 1 ounce or 2 liters of water a day to offset the water loss frequently occurring in the early stages of ketosis. Use more salt. Add 1 to 2 grams of salt per day to offset the amount lost in your urine as you make carbohydrate. Drinking broth helps you satisfy the increased need for sodium and calcium. Potassium and Magnesium Supplement Eat high potassium and magnesium foods to reduce muscle cramps. Good sources include avocado, Greek yogurt, tomatoes, and fish. Limit your physical activity. Do not work excessively for a period of one week. It will take a few weeks to completely adjust to each other, so don't force yourself until you are ready. Bottom line? It takes some time to adjust to a very low carbon or ketogenic diet, but there are a few ways of easing the transition. Diets have a powerful health benefits. According to the available data, ketogenic diets can have powerful advantages for the brain. 
the best evidence applies to the diagnosis of children with drug-resistant epilepsy. Preliminary evidence is also available that ketogenic diets can reduce Alzheimer's and Parkinson's symptoms. Work is underway on the influence of these and other brain conditions on patients. In addition to brain safety, several studies indicate that low-carbon and ketogenic diets can cause weight loss and help control diabetes. These diets are not ideal for all, but can offer unbelievable benefits for many. Chapter 7 Memory Training Brain Exercises Memory exercises prove to maintain and keep your brain healthy. Evidence shows that constructing the visual map is a significant mind booster. For example, cab drivers in London must memorize 25,000 roads and 20,000 landmarks to be licensed. Neurologists at the University of London have discovered that these cabbages have considerably larger hippocampus or brain regions that store and organize memories. Memory exercise. Draw a map for memory from your neighborhood, your path, or another common location. Then any time you visit a new location or take a different route home, repeat this exercise. Forget about amazing video games. Paper and pen are a tried and tested way to boost your memory, says experts. Memory exercise. Try to build and save a list of food products, complete activities, etc. See then how many things after one or two hours you can recall. The longer and more complicated the list, the harder your brain exercise will be. Practice simple math problems. Did you think you could go math after high school? Think again. Think again. Experts say an external or subtractive problem will avoid cognitive deterioration every day. Memory exercise. Solve some basic math problems every morning in your mind. No crayon, paper, or calculator allowed. Seek to walk or cook at the same time to get the ante up. Checking your taste buds. Cooking is your brain's winner. The preparing and eating of a meal stimulates the brain regions of scent, touch, sight, and taste. Moreover, you can even boost your alert with your senses. For one test, people who saw a series of pictures were more likely than without to identify those with a scent. Memory exercise. Push the flavor of the individual ingredients in the dish to the faintest herbs and spices as you chew. Storytelling This is a fantastic mental stimulant that lets you concentrate on important information, link feelings in your memories, and recall important life events later. This was also used for treating Alzheimer's disease. Memory Exercise Replay the events of the day in your mind before you go to sleep at night. Seek to recall the specifics from the moment you woke up to when you climbed to bed. Class Taking To keep your noggin in a top shape, it is important to continue to learn, regardless of age. Experts believe that you can avoid mental age and improve your memory over your life. Memory Exercise whether it's cooking or measuring, enroll in a class that teaches you new things. Trust us. Thank you for your brain. Play a new sport. You can even keep your brain bumping if you have a heart pump. Athletic practices, such as yoga, golf, or tennis, have been related to improve brain function and strength. Memory exercise. Register to practice a sport you never played before and review the rules and procedures. Demount your fine motor skills. Like playing a sport or taking part in a new class, your brain can stay involved and balanced by mastering tasks that involve significant hand-eye coordination. Memory exercise. Take up a new hobby that involves your hands to knit, paint, or assemble a puzzle. 
perhaps better, chew gum as you do it. One study has shown that chewing gum can enhance memory and focus when performing a task. Cram phone numbers. Just a quick brain training session may have a huge effect on your memory. Memorize phone numbers. Researchers think you can secure and reinforce your brain cells by challenging the brain with memorization puzzles. Memory exercise. Impress your mates with their telephone numbers. Arshaf al -MD suggests splitting into three parts per 10-digit number. For instance, 801, 555, 8372 is easier to remember than 801558372. Creating a mnemonic sentence. Making a mnemonic tool is a dumb way to store an important law, reality, or listen your memory bank. Some of these are acronyms, such as RICE, a first aid treatment for injuries, breast, ice, compression, lifting. Others, like spring forward, fall back, come in the form of sentences that remind you to reset the clock two times a year. Memory exercise. The next time you memorize something, come up with a sophisticated acronym or phrase. Do you need inspiration? Learn and understand foreign language. Studies of a foreign language indicate that learning something fresh and complex for a long time will protect an aging brain. Not only are excellent mental stimulants listening and hearing activities, but modern language learning can also reduce the risk of cognitive decline. Memory exercise. Enroll in your nearest college or online foreign language course. If you're stuck for time, you can learn Rosetta Stone or Duolingo at your own pace. Increase your processing speed. Instantly or slow on your feet? If your answer is the latter, your brain can be in difficulty. According to a study in the journal Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience, Learning to adapt and process information rapidly will eradicate dementia. Memory exercise. Try PQRST for quick processing of long written information in five stages. The acronym means read the material or miss it. Inquire about the key points of the text. Read it again. Research the answers and check yourself. Repeat loud. Saying loud information will improve the chances of recalling it later, according to study. Themes reading written information loudly showed 5-15% to 15 increase in retention in a study published in the journal Memory. Memory Exercise Repeat out loud to recall something you've just done, learned, or read that will clutch your mind. Save your mental don't waste valuable brain power in trying to remember where you put your keys or the time of the next appointment for your doctor. You can focus your energy instead on new information by removing unnecessary distractions. Memory exercise. Maintain a calendar or a diary and mark space for things you frequently forget. Using visual reminders. Last but not least, there is no damage to your brain in the occasional string around your finger. Memory Exercise Position post notes to act as reminders all day on your computer keypad, desk, or fridge. You may wear a wristband or also put an alarm on your phone. Study the phone bill Take a look at your phone account and try to remember who every telephone call was made to. Look back at your recent call log and try to recall what you and the other person have been talking about if you rely on your mobile phone for a full time now. Mess with your computer. Flip the computer mouse with the joystick so that pushing the ball to and fro lets the cursor travel to and fro. Alternatively, operate the non-dominant hand by plugging the mouse into the computer's opposite side. Reminisce. Seek to recall the names of teachers or friends in your school class. 
See if you can recall things about what they were or what kind of person they were. Talk of a workplace you once worked in the next day. How much you can recall. You'll be shocked. Read downward. Flip your book or newspaper upside down. Read upside down. Please read the page from top to bottom. Know how much more effort is required to grasp the sentence structure. Check your vocabulary. Write down as many words as you can begin in two minutes with a certain letter in the alphabet. Seek letters like M, T, and C, or question O or Y. Time yourself. Concentrate one minute on the second hand of a watch or clock. Close your eyes now and see if you can exactly time for a minute. Perhaps you're shocked how off you are. Make a new route. Every day you drive, ride, or bike the same way, your brain can go on a self-pilot. Find a new route to stimulate your mind. You will imagine the road that activate the cortex and the hippocampus. Take a picture. Look at a photo online and try to recall everything in it. Cover the picture and list the things. Now look again at the photo and see how many you've got right. Eat with chopsticks. Just as your computer mouse is turned on, this causes you to slow down and see what's going on. This will make you enjoy your food even more as a bonus. Always brush your teeth with non-dominant hand. The research has found that by using the opposite side of the brain, as in the exercise, the expansion of the areas of the cortex can be fast and important, regulating and processing the tactile input from the hand. Mind practice. Clean your hand not normally, and don't forget to remove the tube and reverse the toothpaste. Shower closed eyes. Your hands can detect different textures in your body you're not seeing and send signals back to your brain. Brain practice. Just try to use the tactile senses, but use common sense to avoid burning or injury. Simply find the taps and change the temperature. Then shower, shave, close your eyes, and so on. Switch around your daily activities. Brain imaging studies show that new activities exercise large areas of the cortex that suggest increased levels of brain activity in many different regions. When the task is routine and automatic, this operation declines. Brain practice. Dress up after breakfast. Take a new route to your dog or change your TV or news channel. Just watching a children's show like Sesame Street, for instance, will make the brain feel how much you think is studied in detail by children. Turn familiar things, literally, upside down. When you take a right side look, your left visual brain easily marks them and turns your attention away. Once they are upside down, the right brain network continues to perceive a confusing picture shapes colors, and ties. Mind exercise. Turn your family memories, your desk clock, or upside down an illustrated calendar. Switching table seats. Everybody has their own seat in most communities, but the brain benefits from new experiences. Training in the brain. Switch seats to adjust the place, the person you are working with your view of the room, or even your way towards salt and pepper. Establish new connection with your nose. You still don't know when you learned to associate the coffee scent with the beginning of the day, yet you can warn new neural pathways by connecting a new odor, say cinnamon, citrus, or peppermint, to an operation. Brain Exercise Hold the week by your bed, an extract of your favorite scent. Open it and inhale when you wake up first, then bathe and dress again. Open your car window. The hippocampus, a memory processing region in your brain, 
requires a combination of smells, sounds, and sights to create mental maps. Education in the brain. Try to distinguish different smells and sounds along the way. Opening the windows provides more raw material for these circuits. Play with spare money. Since our brains constantly rely on visual signals to differentiate between subjects, touching to recognize subtly different objects increases activation in the cortical areas that process tactile data and contributes to stronger synapses. Brain exercise. Place a full cup of coins in your car's drink holder. As people who lose sight learn to discern the letters from the braille as your brain devotes more paths to the processing of fine touch. At a stoplight, try to decide the names along. You can also place coins on a walk in your pocket and mark them when you stand at an angle. Play 10 Things It will help the brain think of alternatives to the everyday. Brain Exercise some hands you with an ordinary object and you must demonstrate 10 different objects. For example, a tennis racket, a golf club, a fan, a baton, a drum rod, a guitar, a shovel, a microphone, a baseball bat, or a canoe paddle, maybe a fly swatter. Scan at Supermarket in grocery stores, it is designed to have the most valuable products at the level of the eyes, and when you shop there, you just don't see it. Brain Practice Stand at every aisle and look at the regiments from top to bottom. If you've never seen something before, take it, read the ingredients, and think about it. You don't have to buy it to benefit. Your routine has broken up and something new has happened. Doing an art project in an art community. This stimulates the mental and nonverbal elements of the cerebral cortex. When you make art, you draw on parts of your brain that are interested in shapes, colors, and textures, as well as in processes that are very different from the sequential thinking that most of our day requires. Brain exercise. Ask each person, like a season, emotion, or current event to draw something relevant to a specific subject. Establish more social connections. Scientific work has consistently shown that socioeconomic poverty has significant adverse effects on overall cognitive skills. Exercise in the brain. Thirsty? Buy a person's drink instead of a seller. Do you need gas? Pay the employee at the counter and not just pump your credit card. Read differently. If we read aloud or hear reading, we use very different brain pathways than if we read quietly to ourselves. Read differently. Brain training. Read aloud with your partner or friend, alternating reading and listening positions. It may take a while to get through a novel but can also spend quality time together in addition to training your brain. Eat foreign foods. By stimulating special combinations of receivers in the nose, the olfactory system can distinguish millions of fragrances. The emotional core of your brain is directly linked so that new smells will produce unexpected feelings and associations. Brain practice. Pick a cuisine that you do not know. Check the selection of new vegetables, seasonings, and good packaging. Chapter 8 Brain Myths Distinguishing Reality from Fiction As we mature, we develop awareness, learn skills, change our behaviors, and even fine-tune our views. But we may also unwittingly buy some wrong knowledge along the way. With respect to the brain, old testing methods and equipment have been replaced with new, non-invasive, innovative sampling methods and technologies. Results of research in fields such as neuroscience, pharmacology, artificial intelligence, and psychologies are now generating a wealth of new information for the scientific community, the educational arena, and the general public. 
and deboning all around misconceptions about the brain carried over the years. Here are some of brain's most common myths. We use just 10% of our brain. For about a century now, the 10% brain theory has been pushed. Versions of this myth were reproduced, changed, extended, and propagated to the point of its unidentifiable origin. Those who propagated this theory did not know so in a conscious effort to be misleading. Rather, they assume, or maybe hope, that we humans have far more potential or capacity to be tapped into. Here's a scenario which illustrates how we use a lot more than 10% of our brains. You decide to stop by your local bookstore, where your favorite coffee is served. You're trying to check out, can't resist, the newly released brain game looks and order a latte. You say, an easy mission, but let's look closer. Movement and coordination are important when you reach the store. Movement is done by your motor cortex at the back of your front lobes that helps you to consciously move your muscles and to focus, the capacity of your brain that regulates the coordination and position second largest. You are heading to the back of the shop and you turn your eyes about, hoping that you do not see a long queue. Visual information is recognized and understood in your occipital lobes, situated in the back of your brain. The rich scent of your coffee alerts your olfactory senses as it drifts into your nose. Smells pass from your nasal cavity through your brain's limbic system through your olfactory bulbs. You are noticed by the server and asked if you would like your usual. Your temporals process his voice's vibrations. Wernick's region is also found in your temporal lobes, responsible for interpreting the language. Thanks to your Broca's region in your motor cortex, which is part of your speech output, you can respond with an appreciative, yeah, thanks. As your coffee cup picks up, the sensory receptors in your skin move in your parietal lobes to your sensory cortex, and you feel the relaxed cup in your hands. Now, if you recall that this detailed description has designed to show that you use far more than 10% of our brains, you use your hippocampus, which converts short-term memory into long-term memory, and your front cortex, which recovers these memories. Suppose you got stumbled and got out of the bookshop, fractured your skull, and got hurt in your brain. Can you imagine the doctor telling you excitedly that he has good news and some bad news? The bad news that 90% of your brain is affected by the implant and the good news is that you never use it in the 90%. Of course not. Of course not. The truth is that every day you use nearly every portion of your brain. The real question is, how much of your ability are you using? When was the last time someone asked you, are you left-brained, logical, sequential, deductive, maths, or right-brained, creative, artistic, visual, and imaginative. Most people are left-brain. The left-right brain theory probably took hold in the 1800s, when damage to one side of the brain frequently led to a loss of particular abilities. The theory was reinforced by the 1960s Nobel Prize, Roger Walcott Sperry's winning work on the broken brain's patients. In an attempt to minimize the severity of intractable epilepsy in his patients, Dr. Sperry cut off the corpus callosum in his patients and decreased the frequency and aggression of their epileptic attacks. The corpus callosum, over 2 million nerve connections, binds both halves and provides a contact device. In many patients, the effect of the separation of the corpus callosum and its associated neuropathways significantly decreased seizures, but also created a curious condition. The two divided hemispheres worked independently, like two brains in one body. If the relation between the two hemispheres is broken up, all new knowledge, insights acquired or learning from the left hemisphere is absolutely unknown to the right and what is learned from the right hemisphere is totally unknown to the left. With the two hemispheres no longer functioning together, it was like people working with two different minds, 
often having a Jekyll and Hyde effect. Split Brain Research today continues to provide useful knowledge on hemispheric integration and specialization. Thankfully, the majority of us have refused to undergo a hemispherotomy, or corpus callosum remain intact and our two hemispheres remain united. Continuously contact and collaboration as a cohesive whole. Multitasking saves time. In our harried heat, you have to do it yesterday. Multitasking saves time. We strive to make the most of the time we have in the world, and it seems to be a smart idea to multitask. Multitasking is the ability to concentrate on and execute two or more activities simultaneously. Neuroscientists say that they can't see things in your brain when performing specific tasks in real time. On the basis of these recent studies, it seems that the next cognitive function can only be performed once the last one has been completed. The brain processes information sequentially, one task at a time, and the brain is therefore forced to switch from task to task while trying to focus on more than one item. It may only take milliseconds to turn. However, milliseconds can be vital, depending on the situation. To invoke one of the most dangerous examples and to concentrate on tense telephone conversations. Looks like this your usual day? You are in your office and you are working on your expense report, task 1. Keeping an eye on your boss who is late this evening, planning to pick up another item, which still needs some additional tasks, task 2. And watch the wife react to the plan change tonight, task 3. Whenever you turn your attention from one of the three tasks to another, the chance of error doubles and not only sacrifices valuable time. Then come the uninvited duties, the interruptions in addition to your many current activities. In his book, Brain Rules, Dr. John Medina says, Studies show a person who is cut off is 50% longer to perform a job and makes up to 50% more mistakes. So when you're interrupted next time, say that it's not a problem because you're an outstanding multitasker. Think again. Drinking alcohol destroys brain cells. Imagine this scene. You're a teenager, just a home from an exciting socially based peer event. Yeah, yeah, you were consumption out, with the consumption of alcohol on the breath. Did your parents sit down and say, Johnny? You know you shouldn't be drinking because alcohol kills brain cells. Perhaps most of us recall this unfortunate warning. Could it be true? Is this reckless action likely to cause intentional neural massacre? May it be bad enough to flush out the brain cells? Even back at that time, there was proof that we have trillions of brain cells, so you would wonder if this tale was real. How much alcohol was ingested in comparison to the amount of cells destroyed? We also explored this subject in our biology class when I was a teenager. How much alcohol can you eat and keep your mind? After all, we needed enough brain cells left to go to college, at least. How glad we were to learn that this was a fallacy. Alcohol does not destroy cells in their brain. But don't be too nervous to celebrate. Alcohol does not destroy brain cells, but it may over-injure the dentries in your cells, thus disrupting the communication pathways of your cells. Alcohol appears to be able to kill nerve cell divisions, slow down intercellular communication, and interrupt key functions of the brain, such as new cell growth. The disturbance of new cell growth is suspected of triggering long-term deficits of moderate to heavy drinkers in hippocampus, long-term memory seat. Cell damage can be reversed if alcohol is limited, but this repair process is not always complete. Nevertheless, there are some doctors who are not fully anti-alcohol, as long as they are moderately consumed. When a medical practitioner uses the term moderate for alcohol, how much does it mean? Dr. Andrew Wheel recommends that moderate drinks, at least for those younger than 65, are just one drink a day for women and no more than two drinks a day for men. We're going to toast to it. 
You can't replicate or grow new brain cells. It is known that we could develop new cells in other parts of our body until the late 1980s, but not in the brain. In essence, that meant that we were born with a small number of neurons and for life. So if cells in your brain died, which they do regularly, or were damaged or killed by brain injury, it was assumed that you actually would have to suffer neuron depletion for the rest of your life. The welcome discovery then came that adults are the proud owners of a mechanism called neurogenesis. Neurogenesis, meaning born of neurons, not only in prenatal phases of development, but in adulthood, is responsible for new neural production. The primary area of neurogenesis tends to be in the hippocampus, the memory and learning center. Do you want to increase the brain's neurogenesis? Get more exercise and lower your stress and you will be satisfied with the birth of your fragile new neurons. The fact or the fiction. You possibly found one or two surprises among these myths and misunderstandings, but don't blame yourself. We naturally believe it when we hear it over and over, especially from trusted authorities like parents, but you know it better now. Go out and spread inference. Chapter 9 Overcoming Shyness and Building Your Self-Confidence Shyness is an apprehension and awkwardness that a few people feel while drawing nearer or when being drawn nearer by other individuals. These individuals want to outgo and to associate with others on a social and passionate level. In any case, they locate this inconceivable on the grounds that they can't deal with the anxiety that accompanies human connection. It's imperative to bring up that shyness is an equivalent to being contemplative. Loners really feel stimulated investing energy alone doing their very own thing. They aren't apprehensive about social gatherings, yet rather essentially want to be independent of anyone else. Social gatherings channel them inwardly, while lone exercises empower and flash their inventiveness. Interestingly, bashful individuals urgently look for the acknowledgement and endorsement of others. This makes them incredibly reluctant and fearful of being judged, mocked, mortified, humiliated, and dismissed. They have a negative self-distraction and regularly assess themselves and their own capacity in constraining ways. Truth be told, with regards to social gatherings, they expect that they will commit errors and bomb hopelessly to associate with others on an important level. Their unhelpful contemplations and convictions about their social connections make them very shaky. But then, one of their most charming qualities, that of being an astute audience, is an indispensable piece of any significant social relationship. Negative Effects of Shyness Being overwhelmed with shyness is never useful for your social development and growth, in addition to the fact that it causes you to intentionally maintain a strategic distance from social gatherings, it can likewise prompt disengagement, pity, dejection, lament, and gloom. Indeed, every time you maintain a strategic distance from a social gathering, you are right then and there draining your supplies of fearlessness. Furthermore, the less self-assurance you have, the more uncertain you are going to give your assessment to make new companions, to exploit social chances, to advance your vocation, or accomplish your ideal goals. We as a whole have objectives and goals that we might want to accomplish. It's lamentable for modest people that by far most of these targets require the assistance of other individuals. This implies to carry their objectives to realization they should wander out into the world and make social associations. If really that they can't do this, at that point, they will wind up carrying on with a real existence brimming with second thoughts and unfulfilled guarantees. These results can prompt a dangerous life. And also, it doesn't have to be like this. 
on the off chance that shyness is right now coordinating your choices and activities, at that point, it's not very late to roll out some significant improvements beginning today. The voyage, obviously, won't be simple, and it will require some investment and exertion. Be that as it may, with a craving to roll out these improvements, stick and promise to overhaul your social skills, you can unquestionably turn your life around. Essential Steps in Overcoming Shyness Getting over shyness is not an easy task. This isn't a simple procedure. There are numerous anxieties and fears in the mix, and in that capacity, you might just need to work through every one of them exclusively. In any case, as with everything that is of worth, you will absolutely gain ground insofar as you're industrious and pursue the procedure well-ordered. Here is four steps procedure you can use in overcoming shyness. Number one, gain clarity. Your absolute and initial step is to understand what it is you might want to accomplish. Your ideal goals ought to be at first be extreme basic and clear. For example, you may set an objective to pose an outsider an inquiry. After this underlying experience, you could set another objective to have a two-minute discussion with an outsider. At that point, from that point, you would set extra objectives that will enable you to gain much more ground. Ask yourself, What is my main goal? What might I want to have the option to do socially? What is my underlying objective going to be? How can I get the ball rolling? What goals must I logically set to get to my ultimate goal? It doesn't lie what your objective is. The length of you are clear about it and it causes you become increasingly positive about social gatherings. Your true objective, obviously, may be to interface and system with several individuals at a systems administration occasion at some point later on. In any case, you will positively need to gather speed logically after some time before this occasion, or else you may wind up being hit with fear and anxiety on the day. Having recognized your objectives, you should now recognize the snags that are right now keeping you away from making positive strides pushing ahead. Ask yourself, What explicitly is keeping me away from accomplishing my main goal? What is my opinion about this? With regards to shyness, your impediments are frequently psychological and internal. You might just have unhelpful reasoning styles that are ruling your idea examples, or you could have restricting convictions about a specific social gathering, or it could boil down to extremely limit desires for the social gatherings you are in. It's significant that you are clear about every one of these deterrents before pushing ahead. Ask yourself, What exactly am I thinking about with regards to this social situation? What explicitly am I saying to myself about the social gathering or potentially about my capacity to deal with this gathering? How is talking and thinking with myself along these lines harming me? What about what I believe in? What do I believe about this social situation? What do I accept about myself in this situation? What do I expect will happen when I enter this social situation? Responding to these questions will furnish you with a deep comprehension of your mental propensities with regards to this specific social event. The more noteworthy clearness you have about these things, the more viably you will almost certainly work through these detours effectively. Number 2. Challenge Your Assumptions It's currently time to take the appropriate responses you investigated in the past advance and start testing your suspicions. We are obviously expecting that the manner in which you're considering this specific social gathering isn't down-to-earth or supportive and in that capacity, there must be a superior method to contemplate these potential situations. 
investigate these conceivable outcomes by asking yourself, is this a practical way to see things? Am I possibly disregarding or ignoring the realities? By what other means can I view this social situation? It's truly conceivable that you are basically not seeing things obviously. You may, indeed, be seeing the gathering in a ridiculous and unhelpful manner. There could possibly be things that you're sitting above, and this is making you feel unconfident, fearful, and restless. If that you think that it's hard to see the gathering from an alternative perspective, at that point, it's significant you search out other individuals' conclusions, viewpoints, and perspectives. Locate a confided and a companion who makes you feel great and secure, and approach them for their sentiment and viewpoint about the social gathering you are battling with. Request that they help you see the gathering through their eyes. Rationally stroll in their shoes for a minute and experience what they are encountering as they clear their path through this social gathering. The more supportive points of view you accumulate about this social gathering through your very own investigations and by asking other individuals, the to a lesser extent a hold your constraining convictions and unhelpful reasoning propensities will have over your choices and activities. In any case, Regardless of whether after this, you are as yet feeling to some degree reluctant and hesitant, at that point, ask yourself, What's the most terrible that could occur? In what capacity can I handle this worst scenario? What's my strategy? Who could possibly help me to get past this? The most terrible that could happen isn't as awful as you portray it. Truth be told, the worst case situation will seldom happen. If it does happen, at this point you will get ready for whatever happens. This by itself can enable you to pick up the important certainty you have to step forward towards beating your sentiments of shyness. Number 3. Take Small Steps You should now be prepared to make little steady strides day by day towards your ultimate objective. You should, obviously, start gradually and gather speed after some time. This is significant. Hopping into things too early can rapidly raise your anxiety levels, and accordingly, you will promptly withdraw into your usual range of familiarity. To stay away from this situation, make certain to set reasonable desires. Regardless of whether you set aside the effort to completely get ready for the social gathering, it would even now be sensible to expect that you will feel somewhat on edge and that startling difficulties may emerge. This is alright. It's alright to feel restless. Anxiety will enable you to raise your degrees of readiness. Truth be told, all that you accomplish just because, or even things that you haven't accomplished for quite a while, are frequently loaded with anxiety and somewhat strain. These enthusiastic encounters will in the end pass. It will take some time and you should increase some involvement. The more experience you gain, the more prominent the certainty you will marshal pushing ahead. As you make arrangements to everyday strides towards your end goal, set aside an effort to think about the following. What particularly will I do socially today? By what means will I do this thing? Where exactly will I do it? Who will possibly be there? To what extent will I do it for? When drawing up your strategy, it's completely fundamental that you think about every one of these questions. These questions will enable you to be quite certain about the little advances required to arrive at your true objective. For example, you can decide to go to the general store and ask three outsiders questions about a thing in their shopping basket. You will do this in the shopping passageway. You will collaborate with every individual for a sum of 30 to 60 seconds. When you have accomplished your objective for that day, compensate yourself and plan to make another positive stride pushing ahead the extremely following day. Notwithstanding, 
make confident that tomorrow you do somewhat more. Perhaps tomorrow you will talk with five individuals and ask them a few questions about things inside their shopping basket. Possibly, you could even set an objective to converse with them for as long as 90 seconds, one after another. As mentioned in the previous pages, sudden and unexpected things will occur. Individuals won't generally be receptive to your questions. A few people may, actually, be in a surge that would prefer not to hit up discussions with arbitrary outsiders. Other individuals may have an extremely terrible day, and therefore, they may be inconsiderate or disregard all of you together. Try not to accept this as an individual attack. These individuals are not out to get you. They are just having an awful day and being inconsiderate, and once in a while, pernicious is a useful method to discharge some strain. Simply overlook these individuals. Leave and discover another person you can interact with. Number 4. Learn from your experience. The last advance of this procedure is to gain from your experience. You may, in this manner, return home after your shopping endeavor at your nearby grocery store and plunk down with a pencil and cushion and work out your considerations, sentiments, and perceptions. Truth be told, here are a few questions you may get a kick out of the chance to pose to yourself about your experience. How did things go today? Did I achieve what I set out to do? What worked out well for me? Where did I encounter? What surprising difficulties did I face? How could I handle these difficulties? By what other method would I be able to have dealt with these difficulties? How may I have improved things if it happens again? What will I do in a different way tomorrow? What will I be able to improve tomorrow? There are numerous questions you could possibly ask. Ideally, these questions can prompt you to get started. However, in the end, the most significant thing is to take in the exercises from the experience you had today, and after that, to present those exercises into your tomorrows. That is the main way you will learn and develop and gain ground to conquer shyness. Preparing yourself for social situations. There are many things you can do every day that will enable you to feel more positive, self confident, and confident when it comes to placing yourself into social events. Let's go through some of these things in a little detail. Fortify, strengthen your physiology. Your body usage affects how you feel. How you feel affects your perceptions. And this, in turn, affects the choice you make and the actions that come with it. At the point when in a modest perspective, you will in general be reluctant. You will take in a shallow way and your developments will be amazingly mindful. How are you regularly going to gain any ground socially if that you approach social gatherings along these lines? Rather than being in a shy state, be certain. Truth be told, counterfeit your certainty. Have you at any point known about the maxim? Counterfeit it till you make it. All things considered, living along these lines can be a fairly helpful. Consequently, as opposed to moving your body like a bashful individual would work on moving your body as if you were certain and secure in your own skin. Ask yourself, how can a confident individual move his or her body? How can a confident individual stand? How can a confident individual sit? How can a confident individual act in social gatherings? How about facial expressions? What can they look like? The responses to these questions will give you the rules you have to make the important acclimations in your physiology. It is insufficient to simply know these things. Really set aside some effort to get ready and work on moving unhesitatingly from the start without anyone else, and later when in the organization of others. 
In case you need assistance, at that point, essentially close your eyes and picture yourself in your creative mind as being confident about social gatherings. Regardless of how it turns out, don't stop there. Additionally, envision being brave, inquisitive, persistent, and hopeful. These qualities will help change your physiology and help you to approach social gatherings with undeniable more certainty and confidence. At first, these progressions will feel unnatural and constrained. In any case, after some time, you will really increase genuine certainty, and that is the point at which you will never again feel as if you're moving or acting unnaturally. Your certainty will basically turn into a piece of who you are in social gatherings. Remain calm under pressure. At the point when in social gatherings, you will tend to feel somewhat uncertain and anxious. It's normal becoming overpowered with anxiety. In any case, it shouldn't be like this as long as you prepare ahead of time. Learning all you could about to keep your feelings and emotions cool, collected, and calm during stressful situations. This basically comes down to building up the important enthusiastic adapting skills you will require when looked with analysis, dismissal, and when you commit social stumbles or errors. You should confront the way that you will be rejected and will commit errors. It's significant not to harp on these things. These things are a piece of life and a piece of development and improvement. Gain from them and proceed onward. Your past is just there to enable you to settle on better choices later on, not to make you feel hopeless about yourself right now. There are numerous things you can do to keep yourself engaged, focused, and aware of the present minute. One of these procedures is called dynamic muscle unwinding. It very well may be utilized now and again to help quiet your body and focus your psyche. It works by logically loosening up each muscle of your body beginning from your toes and completing at the tip of your head. It's something that is best practiced resting. Anyway, it should likewise be possible holding up. Simply close your eyes for a couple of minutes and see as a flood of quieting vitality ventures from the earth into your toes and up through your body. During these minutes, you are attracting your consideration regarding the present. You are never again considering what others will think, say, or do. Rather, you are concentrating on being aware of existing apart from everything else. Also, this is the thing that will help quiet your feelings and enable you to assemble your considerations and travel through the social gathering with far less passionate change. Avoid Perfection there is nothing of the sort as flawlessness. You will never be flawless. You can just do your absolute best, and your absolute best will bring about altogether different results relying upon the day and the social gathering you end up in. Try not to be challenging for yourself when you commit errors. Mix-ups are a typical and characteristic piece of life. Truth be told, the main way you'll learn is the point at which you commit errors. It's each of the learning procedure that requires some investment, persistence, commitment, and exertion. You will, in the long run, arrive, and you won't be immaculate. That is superbly typical. No one is flawless, regardless of how things show up superficially. Do not compare yourself to others. Contrasting yourself with other individuals when you're deficient in certainty will just discourage you and make you feel totally hopeless. Rather, contrast yourself with as well as can be expected be. Furthermore, even as well as can be expected will be distinctive on various occasions. Everything you can do is attempt your best and after that, gain from this experience to improve whenever around. Try not to label yourself as being shy. Marking yourself as being shy will frequently bring about acting modest. Rather name yourself as certain, enthusiastic, and intentional in your activities. Consistently you venture out into this world, you are on a mission. There is a genuine reason and explanation for every one of your activities. 
You have objectives to accomplish and activities, and cooperating with others on a social level is only an aspect of your responsibilities. Keep in mind that the marks you give yourself are simply convictions. Some of the time these convictions are of your own creation, while different occasions they depend on others' individuals' desires for you. For example, other individuals may have disclosed to you more than once that you're modest. At first, you probably won't have named yourself thusly. Notwithstanding, after some time as an ever-increasing number of individuals mark you as being shy, you have started to accept this, and your underlying thoughtful nature has transformed into a social phobia that is meddling with your vocation. If that you have a lot of restricting convictions that are making you see yourself as a bashful individual, at that point, work through these convictions without anyone else's input or chat with somebody about them. Ask a nearby and believed companion to scrutinize this conviction to help the Hoss question in your brain about the legitimacy of accepting and thinking along these lines. Educate yourself. Invest some energy and time teaching yourself about how to improve your social skills, your ability to handle conflict, and your social manner. Discover what you should do to turn out to be progressively confident and assertive. Additionally, become familiar with human instinct and nonverbal communication, or body language. These skills will help improve your comprehension of social circumstances. Moreover, they can help furnish you with the assertiveness that you deserve to work through social problems effectively. Important Ideas for Taking Proactive and Positive Action When you have done all the preparation, you are currently prepared to venture out into this world and start interfacing with individuals on a social level. This, definitely, doesn't imply that you are out of the forested areas and won't fall once again into your old examples. This could occur, and thusly, you should get ready for this probability. What it means is that you are prepared to keep making dynamic advances that will enable you to pick up the certainty you have to advance effectively inside the social world. Here are a few basic ideas that will enable you to build that momentum you need to defeat your shyness. Try to meet new people. Every time you get out of bed, Make a pledge that you will go out and meet new individuals. This, obviously, doesn't mean you should make an extra effort to acquaint yourself with another person. It shouldn't be this troublesome. Rather, when you visit your neighborhood store to do some shopping, converse with a representative or to another client. While you're strolling your pooch grin at an outsider and ask them how their day has been. Or in case you're at the rec center, volunteer to assist somebody with their exercise or request that a more interesting give you a few pointers and tips to help improve your exercise system. Meeting new individuals is simple and can be very easy without you expecting to go the additional mile. In another case, you should, at any rate, attempt to escape the house. You can just meet new individuals on the planet outside the limits of your parlor. Look out for positive role models. Normally, set aside the effort to search out help from individuals who are certain and socially dynamic. Utilize them as good positive examples to enable you to keep building up your trust in social gatherings. Having companions who are socially cordial will urge you to get out more frequently and interface with others. These individuals won't just furnish you with a genuine model you can pursue, However, they can likewise acquaint you with other similarly invested people who can turn out to be a piece of your developing encouraging group of people. See everything as a learning experience. Regardless of what befalls you, see it as just a learning background or experience. Things won't go as you had anticipated. Truth be told, things may now and again work out much more awful than you anticipated. What's more, that it's impeccably alright. It doesn't make a difference what befalls you as long as you utilize this experience to enable you to develop, create, and improve yourself later on. Guideline for Socializing However, 
there are great things you can do that will enable you to create meaningful and deeper relationships with other individuals. First off, while you're socializing, attempt to smile as much as possible. Grin truly from the heart as you tune into individuals. Your grin will make them feel progressively good, and they will similarly turn out to be increasingly receptive to you and to the questions you pose to them. The one thing that is all the more dominant than a grin is the center, consideration, and the eye-to-eye connection you give someone else while talking with them. Giving a great eye-to-eye connection doesn't mean gazing at the other individual. You must be delicate with your look and demonstrate the other individual that you're keen on what they are saying. It's additionally critical to ask open finished questions. Open finished questions are questions that empower more than a yes or no answer. These questions are frequently keen and delve further into the discussion. They will get the other individual discussing their life, issues, and conditions in interesting and startling ways. Also, when you have them there discussing themselves, keep working by asking considerably progressively open finished questions to help invigorate further discussion. Conclusively, concentrate on being useful. A great many people are just pondering themselves and their issues. It's uncommon to discover somebody who listens cleverly to your issues and after that ideas to help somehow or another. Help by offering guidance. Help by sharing your own encounters. Help by acquainting them with somebody who may most likely help. Help by sharing a motivating statement. Help by giving them a title of a self-help guide, and so on. There are numerous approaches to help. Simply be available for endless possibilities. Don't overanalyze situations. Keep in mind that it's significant not to think about things literally. Everybody has their terrible days, and a few people are simply rude, inconsiderate of others, and grumpy. Regardless of what these individuals do and no make a difference in how they react to you, don't think about it literally. It's additionally significant not to attempt and over-investigate the gathering by supporting how and why things happened the manner in which they did. Losing all sense of direction and these sorts of subtleties will just wreck your endeavors. Rather, concentrate on moving on and build your confidence level through constant practice and effort. The more you interact with a stranger, the more your confidence will be. The experience you have gained will help decrease your anxiety, and after some time, you will secure the confidence level you need to establish a discussion with a stranger without emotional turmoil or much effort. Volunteer your time and join groups. There's presumably no better method to conquer bashfulness at that point to join a gathering of similar people who offer your interests and interests. For example, you could join a pastime gathering, a book club, or an exchange bunch in your general vicinity. Sharing in these gatherings will furnish you with a chance to start feeling increasingly certain about your social gatherings. Assuming you need to up the ante a little, At this very point, you may can that chance to join a community organization or a little creation house where you will be urged to tweak your acting skills. On the off chance that this makes you feel awkward, at that point, another incredible choice is Toastmasters. Toastmasters is an overall open talking association. It's for the learner, middle of the road, and propelled speakers who need to improve their specialty. Be that as it may, it's not only for speakers, it's for any individual who needs to improve their certainty. The incredible thing about Toastmasters is that you can join the gatherings and there's no wait for you to take an interest. You can take part whenever and in whatever limit you pick. It's everything up to you. Sit and watch other individuals beat their apprehensions of open talking first, and afterward, when you're prepared, Participate at your pace. Not exclusively will you get an opportunity to talk inside a gathering setting. However, you will likewise get a chance to interface with other similarly invested individuals on an individual level. Conclusively, 
The best situations for interfacing with other individuals is the point at which you volunteer your opportunity to a decent purpose. The extraordinary thing about this choice is that your work, the time you volunteer, turns into your social learning play area. No one is going to pass judgment on you. No one will blame you or criticize you. It's tied in with serving a more noteworthy reason, and nobody's assistance is enormously esteemed and acknowledged. As should be obvious, there are numerous open doors accessible to enable you to conquer shyness. Take them. Use them. Grasp them. There is a world loaded with conceivable outcomes and potential. It's dependent upon you to get a handle on it with great enthusiasm and a huge grin all over. Leave shyness before and grasp a progressively positive, energizing, and unprecedented life. Conclusion Maybe you thought it was a fickle organ before you read this novel. It faded randomly in and out, or you think. What's worse, though was your helpless feeling that you couldn't do anything to ensure or boost its accuracy. After reading this book, I hope you realize that you have a multitude of methods to improve it. You were just introduced to some of them. Check them out. Take them out. Mix and match them. Mix and match them. Take your time. Take your time. Whatever methods you select... Realize you can feel the positive results of your decisions a while before you. Whether you choose to adapt your lifestyle, adjust your eating habits, or even change your environment, you're sure to learn something. You will discover that only the slightest improvements in your life will boost your memory greatly. Maybe a mixture of strategies, one from each group, is being attempted. Perhaps you believe your diet holds you mentally off and you're just trying a few in the diet chapter. Whatever you choose, note that it is possible to increase your memory. Before you began reading this book, you may have concluded that your ability to recall could only be improved by means of strategies that either cost you money or expect you to spend much time and energy making substantial improvements in your life. What would have thought it would be as easy to charge your memory as adding a nutritional supplement to your diet or consuming one or two apples a day? Perhaps all you need to do is slightly change your setting, or just organize your house and unlock it. If you think is the right strategy for you, the performance will definitely please you, and with any luck, you will feel amazingly confident using one or two strategies. You can only play with even better ways of recalling them. Congratulations. Thank you. You are well on the way to a new, supercharged memory. This has been Brain Training. Improve your memories, your focus, and self-confidence. Update your concentration capabilities. Written by Jonathan Lee. Narrated by Glenn McGallis.